All right, let's get into it. Guys, I'm freaking pumped for this. We have Victor Alvarez, owner of Induction Performance and BMP. And BMP basically just announced that their schedule for this next year is like, if you can rent a house in Bradenton, you probably should. It's a good idea. And just come move down to this yeah. area. There's well, beaches. It's nice, nice time of year. And I'm not know, sure that we're like summer. done. I don't know. We may do something else cool. I hope so, because as cool as those events are, I feel a little left out. I mean, we can we can squeeze you in there, maybe. We'll see, we'll see what we can do. Line me up with, like, Clay Milliken or something cool, uh, you know? We'll try to set, we'll set you out at the eighth mile. You guys run to the thousand. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it yeah, out. exactly. Something along those lines. But, dude, the freaking schedule is serious right yeah. now. No, I, like, every year I worry that, like, wow, I did something really cool this year. What am I going to do to top it next year? And this year it just kind of worked out. <laughs> For real. I love that you and Wes at Drag Illustrated just kind of teamed up as, like, he saw Bradenton as, like, the track. Yeah, Let me just kind of put my flag there. and That guy, you know, he's just awesome. He's, like, he's like one of us. He's super solid. Mm -hmm. And he just, like, loves racing. Yeah. So much. And we just, like, we're on the same page, like, me and him all the time. So I pretty much told him, like, man, you got a key to this place. Like, just let me know what cool stuff we're going to do yeah. and when we're going to do it. And uh, it's worked out. He says he doesn't want to do events much, pretty much anywhere else. So we'll see. I mean, it makes sense. I feel like you guys have a formula that's simple, but a lot of drag races don't understand it, is you put up money to win <laughs> and the events are good. Like It sounds so simple. Like, when you it, say it that way, simple on paper. it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> You know, it's funny. Um, but a lot of people miss that, I feel no, like. Yeah, so I feel like this has always been my theory. And I didn't come up with this on my own. I've had a lot of wise people help me along the way. But it's like if you go to a movie, the actors get paid. If you go to, like, a Broadway show, the actors get paid. Yep. Right? So yeah. if you As go to one an, would expect. Yeah, if you go to an event, who's putting on the show? The racers, mm -hmm. right? So, like, if they win, they should get paid. You shouldn't get a, a, a sum of money that doesn't even cover your expenses yeah. to be there. So I think like something that me and Wes really agree on is not only just that, but like if we want to build this sport, we need to like really give a big stage to our racers. Like we need to have, we need them to feel like, holy shit, I just won this trophy or I just yeah. won this event or I just won this check or like whatever it is. Like we need to give them a big stage and we need more heroes in drag racing. Like, that's the only way it grows. Like, you can name a player on any team that mm -hmm. you like, and so can the average person and this and that. But how many people can name, you know, the five greatest drag racers of all time? Yeah. They're going to say John Force, and then they're going to be stuck. I think about that all the time. Right? <laughs> so, because even, like, that's why I like to do this, because I want to be able yeah. to show an hour and a half of some drag racer that somebody might not know. Yeah, no, and, like, that's why this stuff that you do and, like, so many people are starting to do, like, I love this. Like, this platform of people just, like, car guys talking yep. and, like, shining light on, like, the issues in our sport, the you know, the, the positive things that are happening in our sport and just, like, putting it, making trying to make it as mainstream as possible. I love it. I, like, super support it. I drove an hour and a half down here. I know. I mean, you made the trip. I, well... I am near your racetrack, so... There's no racing going on tonight, Coop. Yeah. I'm here for you. It's actually the first time it's rained in, like, a year, it feels like. <laughs> for me, at least. On a racetrack, and you'll feel like it rains all the time. It's been so dry down here, and we yeah. needed a little bit of rain. But this Monday's is... okay. I, this is kind of our winter anyways, though. Monday's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, our season's exact opposite of, like, what people would think. Yeah. We don't really do much this time of year. Um, October to March... We're racing. Mm -hmm. So you're in a weird spot too, though, because there's drag strips closing all over the place. Yeah. And it's it, it's not like, oh, my competition just shut, shut no. down. It's it's kind of the opposite. Like if I owned a business and, you know, the other mm -hmm. restaurant shut down, I'd be happy. But with drag strips, you need the other ones that are feeder drag strips in a way. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like I think a lot of people don't realize that. Like they probably think that, you know, track owners are jumping up and down like, oh, I still have a track. Oh, another no. one's closed. No, because... <laughs> You know, the people that live four hours from here, they may just like when West Palm Beach closed, they may just sell their cars. Yeah. It may not be feasible for well, them. I heard a lot of people were like, I'm just going to put it back to a street car yeah, and like, go drive it. Which is, you know, not good for our, our industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think people think of the long term effects of that, but I do. Um, and if it was up to me, I mean, I think there's enough 
for all of us. You know what I mean? Like we can all, there's enough weekends on the calendar. Like we can, as long as we're not yep. doing the exact same event on top of each other, like I think we can all coexist. And I think we can all like collectively grow the sport. I think working together is cool. I like seeing you have to travel to five different tracks to race your point series. Yeah, like yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff's cool. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. I wish more people would play ball on that. It kind takes of stuff. a collaborative <laughs> effort and it takes like, track owners to be yeah. able to look past their own nose in a promoters, way. Promoters, yeah. track owners. And it's, I mean, it's it's kind of a funny thing because this sport is like completely ego driven, right? Yeah. And it goes, it goes that way for the promoters and the track owners sometimes as well. And I'm guilty of it. We all are like, you know, sometimes we just like our pride gets in the way. We want to be the best or we want to be the big dog, you know? Mm -hmm. But I like struggle with it all the time because I want to work with people, but they just like don't make it easy. Yeah, there's like the the thought of when you're in a drag race, you want to chop the guy's head off next to you. Yeah. But when you're a track owner and promoter, you kind of want everything to kind of kind of coexist a yeah, little better like, together. But, I mean, even like when your sure audio is good, even when you're drag racing someone, like if me and you line up, I want to like, I want to kill you. Like I want to beat you so bad that you retire. Yeah. But at the end, like when we both get out of our cars, we like hug it out, like good race, man. You know, mm -hmm. like that's kind of like what, that's how it should be. It's okay to be competitive, but that camaraderie and that like love, like that's what drag racing is built on. Well, we get mad as drag racers when like, mm -hmm. say the guy bumps through the light or mm -hmm. breaks on the starting line and you don't get a race. Oh yeah. I and you just kind of like buzz no, down yeah, the track yeah. and you're just like, uh, that's kind of like a hollow victory. Yeah. I want to race. Yeah. I, like, I want to beat the baddest dude on the property to win. Like, otherwise I don't even feel like you can give me the trophy, the check, whatever, like. Nah, I wanted to be like that guy. I've been on both sides of that where you're either waiting for the guy, like yeah, you're yeah, you're yeah. waiting, like push it back another five minutes, like he's fixing his car. And then I've also been on the other side of it where they're like going down the track right as you're pulling up into the yeah, like yeah, they know you're yeah, back there and yeah, they're like yeah. and and you know, everybody's different. I kind of understand it. I'm like, he just he he, he wanted to win that ten grand or whatever it is. You like you you kind of so everybody's different, but also it comes down to sometimes it's like the track and the people running the track, like you don't know. We may have told that guy, like, hey, you're not waiting. You're going. Yeah. And that's happened before. Like, we've had situations where weather is coming. I remember one year we finished, I think it was the reunion. Yeah, we finished the reunion the first time we did that race. We finished it, and I'm not even kidding. Like, the final pair went down the track, and, like, it looked like a, like a storm was, like, just about to, like, unleash on yeah. Bradenton Motorsports Park. And we sent them down, and maybe five minutes later it did. Quick so as in a you can load up. Yeah, so, like, in a situation like that, if, you know, we have got, like, we have, a, you know, your pair is up there and you're not, and we have six pair behind them to yeah. finish the race, they got to go. Like, you know what I mean? Like, whatever the rule book says, that's what it is. We're not pushing cars back. We're not waiting. So there's so many different circumstances. So Some many tracks things, have yeah. a pretty tight curfew, too. <clears throat> yeah. Like, you could be pulling up there at 945, and they're like, you got to freaking. Yeah, curfew's 10, bud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You like, know? you can wait all day, but you're both going to DQ. <laughs> and, like, you know, we're also, like, prideful and like everybody wants to win so bad that you yeah. get you know you get upset in the moment but it is what it is it's you, you live to fight another day it is a it's like a unique sport because you got the team but then when it's when the car is in the staging lane like in the starting line like there's no one else part of that team it's anymore. a one-on-one -on -one sport at that point yeah but then there's so much team <laughs> build up to it yeah and the team gets you to be in that final but there's only one person really at that point to yeah. make that last decision of like a lot of pressure though too. Ride it because, out a little bit more. Because like I don't know about you, but like when I'm in the car, like I'm thinking about that. Like I'm thinking about my team. So like, you know, we have some races that are harder than others. And like when the guys work really hard and like Yeah. Like they do crazy things to make sure that you as a driver have a car that can win. I get in the car and like the, the pressure doesn't bother me, but there's definitely pressure. Like I can't let my guys down. Like I have to absolutely go out there and just like I've never kill it. I've never had that pressure. I've never had like a full I'll remind you next time that I'm It's there usually just with Bronte you. being mad if I lose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to help you next race, and I'll remind you right before, like, the final. I'll be like, Coop, if you mess this up, I'm going to be pissed. And that's fair. You should be. I know Bronte's going to be. <laughs> like, if she, if, if I have she her wait around well, all man. day in the, in the heat, and then I lose because, like, I click the bump button twice, <sighs> that's a bad loss. But you know what, though? It's, it's always good to have that one person in the crew that's, like, emotional but like on a real level not like you know like yeah. a way that like makes you feel like you know you you're not good at what you do but like just like that raw emotion like you need to feel that you know and you need the hyper competitive teammate yeah, if yeah. like i'm i love racing but i'm not like hyper competitive oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like okay. if i lost i'm like that drives me insane well it was great no 
No. I've never been like <laughs> hyper competitive like that. I just I just enjoy the sport and being there. I literally don't do certain things because I'm so competitive. I'm like, I don't want to get into this because I'm gonna get too carried away. <laughs> you have to avoid it on purpose. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm just gonna avoid that sport or that whatever it is altogether. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. And I definitely feel that as a weakness in drag racing where I don't have <clears throat> as much, but then Bronte is hyper competitive. No, I think you've got the the right level though, because you have the right level of competitive competitiveness in your program because you enjoy it. Yeah. So like, there's a downside to being too competitive is that you don't truly enjoy what you're doing because if you don't yep. win, you 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 don't you just you don't have a good time. But the thing is that like, drag racing is a very humble sport. You could have the fastest car, the best tuner, the best program, the most spare parts, and lose every single race of a year. So I tell people all the time like, if you're not good at losing like if you're not okay with losing and you don't have a way of like just handling it well you're gonna hate it yeah it's gonna be a just brutal a sport if you expect to go out there and Ooh. buy your way into a you're win you're gonna have too, a hard time like even if like you have all the money and you can go buy your way into a win you're not gonna you're gonna have a hard time that doesn't i almost think that that doesn't exist anymore to an extent in some classes there's probably some advantage to having you know more funds than the other guy, but like you can find a class that, that you yeah. Can buy your but if you're in. in the right class, like if you're in your, you if you're in yeah. the right group, that won't happen. You know what I mean? Like I don't think that, or I, I don't, I hope that pro mod guys aren't like, oh, that guy's got, you know, a better sponsor than us. Like, nah, man, come on, stop. Yeah, not at that level. I don't think. I think yeah. the rules are too, too much parity in the but rules. But if you're running Ultra Street and you belong in Ultra Street, then you shouldn't feel yeah. that way either. Now, if you're running Ultra Street and you should really be running Limited 235 because that's just like what your budget or your you know, your experience can allow or can afford, then you shouldn't feel you know, like you, yeah. you, you stepped out you know, too soon or whatever. You, you over-punted your coverage or whatever they say. I don't even know sports. what you just said. Yeah, it's something like that. I'm, <laughs> yeah, not, just, you I'm, kinda... listen, I'm not a big sports guy. I yeah. watch the Super Bowl and I watch drag racing. The Super Bowl is on sick week every year, so it's kind of just like... That's true. It's just gone out Super the window. Super Bowl is the weekend of the Pro Superstar Shootout this this year. Oh. So that's why we're racing Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm. Now that, like, I thought we should race on Sunday, if I'm being very honest. But I understand why we're not. Yeah. I mean, the, I, I don't know. I don't like racing Sunday that much because it is kind of a travel day. So th I, there's been a couple races that we've done this year and that I've attended that you race on Friday and Saturday. And, like, going into it, you're like, oh, I got to take a Friday off, and I got to get there early, and blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. When you leave on either Saturday night or Sunday morning and you get home in time to, like, chill out for Sunday, yeah, it is the best. Like, leaving TX2K on Sunday night is a tough one for me, especially now it's in Dallas. It's tough to leave Monday morning. Especially now in Dallas. It's tough whenever you leave. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's a long week, and then you get home. And like most people, you're just right back to it. My car is usually broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. I something hear you. has to come apart, like, you know, trans out or something. Just, you know, make sure you put some respect on that too, Jay, because people are acting a little crazy right now. Yours has been great. Mine has been fantastic. Solid. Exactly. Solid. We actually took yours apart because we wanted to that time that we did. Yeah. It, it was, was still, it wasn't great, but it was still going. Super healthy. I mean, it was still pushing and... Yeah, I mean, it's in a good shape still. Strong engine. You ran the numbers. I appreciate it. Strong engine. The problem is now you have the motors in the hands of two people that will show that they're not good. <laughs> no mercy. <laughs> but the two people I mean is Boosted Boys Kyle and Cletus. Like, but, what am I thinking about when when we when we go down that road? Like, oh, you know what? Us, induction performance, it'd be a great idea <laughs> to give the two rowdiest, craziest people we know a 2J engine and see yep. how strong it is. You're you're lucky with Garrett because that car realistically I'm waiting for this. <laughs> realistically that car should not be drag raced all that much. It with the current safety that it has. I wish that it was drag raced because if it was it'd probably live longer. That's true. He's you have like animal. 45 minutes in between a in between a pass. Man, we went for a drive. Cooper, I haven't been the same since. Yeah, why would you do that? I don't know what I was thinking about. Yeah, and it's crazy. not that he's not, like, he's a great driver. So it takes a lot for me to even, like, get in the car with someone. He's a great driver. You know that. I don't have to tell you. Like, his skill set, he's, like, really good. He can get in pretty much anything, and he'll, like, wheel man that thing. Few people I, bl I will blindly trust to get yeah. in a car with that takes risk, but the appropriate amount of risk. Yeah, yeah. So, that yeah, and, like, with There's him. There's a level to the risk you take. Yeah, no, for sure. And with him, like. I never felt like he didn't, like he wasn't in control. Yeah. It was just a little more than I like to do. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, I that makes sense, especially in a stick shift car where like the wheel speed, the wheel speed mm-hmm. gets up pretty quickly. He turned the traction control off after the first attempt. Mm. He was like, "This is cool, but it's not that cool." We're turning that it's off. It's not cool enough for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that makes sense. I'm excited for Booster Boy's car. That car's gonna be sick. That'll be really cool. Yeah. He was telling me like 200 miles an hour. I was a little skeptical on that one. No, I mean that with that same be light. turbo though. Yeah, it's a lot of mile an hour. It's a lot of weight that he's shutting off that. Thing. Yeah, but it's still horsepower to get to that number, right? Dude, we've been 190 on that turbo at like 3,000 pounds. They'll probably be like or like 3,200 pounds. They'll probably be like 2,500 in the water. Yeah, that'll be pretty serious. 500 pounds is a lot. I I, I have no doubt that it's going to eighth mile really hard. No doubt. We're going to send it. That's what matters. It's going to be a fast It's going to get sent. And, like, it's really cool. I was thinking about it on the way down here. Like, we're at a point, you know, our engine program, the 2J stuff, which I'm going back and forth. I'm, like, induction. And That's fine. All right, so at induction, our, our engine program is, like, so cool. And we have so many cool people running our engines now and so many people have done like really cool things with them like mm-hmm. we have tons of seven second cars six second cars tons of like just six street cars like our engines are out there doing all kinds of stuff it's really cool yeah i think people don't realize that because they only see the couple publicized yeah. ones dude we do like a hundred engines a year i feel like it's probably it's got to be close to that alpha is tuning constantly that guy <laughs> He, you had to add a new tuner under him. He or he, beside him. Yeah, he. I think if he could, he would tune like all day, every day. Yeah, I think twenty four seven. He may like every once. Like he doesn't. Not that he complains, but he may like act like, oh man, I want a day, the, like whatever. But if like somebody hits him up and is like, oh man, my car did something, I think it like it bothers him that he like he just has to figure it out. So he's yeah. always like just always looking at a log or always tuning something. I know. There's like very few times where sometimes I'll send him like a message. He'll be like, hey, the car just did this. It's like and, midnight. And he'll just be like, send a log. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, why did I even bother and texting then you wake, him? And then you wake up and you have a text at 1 a.m. like, let's go in. Uh, can you log into the car? And let's go yeah. ahead and see if we can get this figured out. I made a change. And you're like, dude, I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's Monday. I'm not using the car for another two weeks. Yeah. Like, we're good. Yeah. It doesn't need to be right now. I have to, like, kind of push him to that a little bit. But, like, I feel like to be a good tuner, obviously, you have to have a lot of knowledge and experience. But I think, like, that dedication is what makes him so good. Yeah, the the constant drive for it. <clears throat> but he also is unique in the way that he's, which was the most surprising thing to me when I talked to him, was he's not ECU limited. No, he doesn't care. Yeah, but so many we, tuners We, we limit are. him. So many tuners So when people are. call the shop, the, like the sales team, we limit him because it's just he'll tune anything. And yeah, but like sometimes like it'll slow him down. You know what I mean? So like we try to be as efficient as possible. But that man will literally tune anything. But honestly, that's what separates a good tuner from a not so good tuner or not yeah. great tuner. You know, like if you really know how to tune, then I can like call you over to my house and give you my laptop and be like, hey, use my laptop and download this software and get this car running for me, and you yep. should be able to do it. And like no matter what it is, micro squirt for you should be able to do it. CU, something completely like not as common as. Like a Pro EFI or like a yep. Haltech or yeah, Haltech, Motech, Fueltech. Yeah, all right, man, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Like everybody tunes those. <laughs> yeah. But even then, like if you talk to LS guys, like there's so many of them that are like, oh, I, I don't touch I an LS Holly. on anything else but a Holly. And, and let's just call it what it is. A lot of these tuners, they have a map that they stole from some other guy that yeah. just like works on like this combination. So they're like comfortable. Oh, I don't know. I'll tune your LS, but it's got to be. This size and this compression, this fuel, and it's got to be on a Holly. A lot of tuners sneak in, like, hidden things so they can find it later. Like, they, yeah, I've yeah, heard that a lot yeah. where they're, like, they find a tune come around that they were looking yeah. at, and it's like, oh, this is my tune that so-and-so tuned and him and him and him. But it's very easy to spot, like, who's, like, the, a real deal tuner and who's not. And then something that I learned getting into, like, more into drag racing and domestic drag racing is, like, what's the definition of a tuner, right? So, like... And this isn't a shot at anybody, but in some worlds, like drag racing worlds, somebody be like, oh, my tuner is going to do blah, 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 blah. But like their tuner doesn't like get their car running and dyno tune it Mm -hmm. and like get the fuel map right and the ignition map right. Their tuner gets the car down the track. Their tuner does like power management. And like they like they'll be like, oh, this guy's the best tuner in the world. But like 
I don't know. I could be completely wrong, but that guy might not be able to like dyno tune your car as good as the next guy. Yeah. But when it comes to getting it down the track, he's got that knowledge. Oh, one hundred percent. Like there's some people that like if you got a drive by wire throttle body on your street car and you want it to have good good mannerisms yeah, there, yeah, yeah. you go to a different guy yeah. than if you want your car to sixty foot real well and be yeah. and like super and, spicy. And, to, and to be fair, there's a guy out there that will like get your car to cold start. Perfectly yep. hot start, perfectly great gas mileage, make decent power. That like you tell him you're going to drag race, and your car like didn't launch well. He's gonna be like, I don't know, yeah. you know what I mean? So, so and that's fine. Yeah. There's different that flavors is, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. like in some people are like drift car only, yeah, which is a completely different thing. Yep. You just need that thing to kind so of I guess, live on the limiter. So I guess I, I question sometimes because now every like, and again I'm not like taking shots at anybody, but now like so many people consider themselves to be a tuner. Like, what's the definition? Yeah. But if you've been tuning a drag car for 10 years and you're used to tuning it doing this, and now you have 50, 60 new sensors that you have to pay attention to, you're now talking about shock sensors yeah, and stuff yeah. that you didn't have. You didn't even have a video when you first started doing oh, it. Oh, yeah. And like, I mean, if you, you got to keep up, if you want to be a tuner, you have to be willing to like, always be working on yourself yeah educate, and like learning and like the not keeping up with the times and knowledge and like there's tons of people who are great for 10 or 15 or 20 years and then they fall off because they just like aren't into it anymore and they're not gonna devote that time to do it yeah you kind of have to keep up with the times because it's a it's a changing thing and some of the stuff that i see on these new cars is mind-blowing I tech i love it i love it and then sometimes i hate it so it just depends i love it because i love to see that our sport and our industry is continuing to advance, you know? But then sometimes I'm like, man, why are we overcomplicating this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I look at people in like other industries, like I listen to some people that are in like robotics and like mm -hmm. MIT and stuff like that. And I'm like, Smart man, guys. that would be cool to get somebody like that. <laughs> like, like they probably don't even know like this whole thing of drag racing with all this yeah. data and sensors and stuff exists, but they'd probably be able to throw down on something like that where yeah. talking about leverage points and just and you might, the you, basic you engineering. You might introduce them to the greatest sport in the world. That's the hope is like, where can you put your, like where can you get like an expert engineering person onto something competition like this? It's like, yeah, yeah. You know, when you're in robotics and that kind of crazy stuff that's even growing now and we talk about AI with a couple people on tuning where yeah. some of the new ECU technology will probably end up happening in it if the EPA doesn't squash it in time. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's kind of the fight. <laughs> They've been kind of quiet lately. Let's not even talk about them. Yeah, you that's get them right, right I just about. had JH on, so oh, we gosh. talked about his finds and stuff. And how did I? So I didn't keep up. Like, is he done with all that stuff? Is that stuff like behind him now, or is they are they still like messing with him? He What's paid one hundred and eighty thousand dollars to him. <laughs> that's not good. So I would hope they'd be done with him. I mean, they <laughs> shook him they, out. <laughs> they may come back for more. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna wait a couple of years. They'd be like, he probably yeah. built back up his savings now. We can might be ready for us. us. <laughs> <laughs> right when you think like you got your savings bill back up. What was that like, guy's name again? <laughs> yeah, they keep a rolling list. Like if you get him in two years, he's not gonna have as much money. You gotta wait like four. <laughs> tough, tough deal. Yeah. Tough so deal. what are we doing with um what are we doing with like streetcar stuff? Because we got FL2K. We and got then FL2K. you got a bunch of pro mod stuff and a yeah. bunch of top fuel stuff. Yeah. We have streetcar takeover. Yeah, February uh, yep. also, right? DCT World Cup. Yes. I mean, that's streetcar stuff. Yes, yep. streetcar. Yep. FL2K. Um, the reunion. Yeah. I think that's it. So, you know, it's hard because... And that takes us all the way out till like, December. We're like, yeah, I mean, no. No, I mean, it takes more. us past that. It takes us, like, like almost into to March. summer. And yeah. then it's, like, TX2K. You don't yeah. want to do anything near that. World Cup. Yeah. I mean, you have so much stuff going on. It's hard because for us, again, our window's really small. People don't get it, mm -hmm. like... October to March. If we plan a race, October to March, yeah, we're not trying to put it on top of your race. A couple of no time races in there. Yeah, we're not like we're literally we're not trying like that's just our window. Mm -hmm. So it's hard because the pro mod stuff works really well here because we're in everybody's off season. So November you have a race in Orlando, uh, the World Street Nationals, great race, been around for like twenty or thirty years, whatever. It <clears> is. Yeah, I got a trophy there last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did, you did. So you, <laughs> so November we have World Street Nationals, then December we have the Snowbirds, which is like. Probably, like, it's hard. I, I, ch I change this all the time, but it's probably my favorite race. Like U.S. Street? U.S. Street's great. U.S. Street, yeah. Yeah. And so so you have Snowbirds in December, uh, U.S. Street in January, World Series of Pro Mod in March. So, like, 
after that, it, they're going back to their regular season. These guys yeah. all run a series, NHRA, PDRA, NMCA, uh, Northeast Outlaw Pro Mod, Midwest Pro Mod. Like, that's it. You can't call those yeah. guys down here. Like, that's it. They're, they're, yeah, that's they have it. a point series to go win. So, like, our stuff works just because of that, you know? Um, but we can't do, like, what am I going to do, a race in August? Who Like, it's too hot. Yeah. And, like, the probability of rain, and they're committed to a point series. I think the track was 160 <clears throat> track temp the other day. Dude. <laughs> like people don't understand that's it gets crazy so freaking hot it's hard it's yeah. hard on everyone it's hard on the staff it's hard on the cars it's hard on like literally every single thing it's almost impossible yeah that's why it's good when like tiffany does her street heat yep. deals like yep. the other day where street cars like you yep. straight up drove it there which like the, the street car term is is tough i say oh, street I car know what a street car is. i use street car in two different words honestly because i say street car you drove there like your Porsche yep. that you just kind of can pull up and launch. I think that's like a daily driver at this point. You don't need to I show think the that's, tools. That should be the categories, like yeah. daily driver, style car, or street car. If you have to show up with tools or a fuel jug, it's probably not like a daily driver. Why are you calling out James Tall like that? Yeah, that's true. Dude, why are you calling my boy out like Well, that? the problem is he's like, I drove it here, and I'm like, dude, you live. You could push his car yeah. to the racetrack. <laughs> he tries to pull that on me. I'm like, yeah, it's on methanol. We get it, like, or M5 or whatever. He puts it yeah, on he's, he's, any given moment. He's a wild boy, which I like, I'm happy you brought up Street Heat. So Street Heat is awesome, man. Like, it doesn't get enough attention that it should, in my opinion. So Street mm-hmm. Heat, um, before I even bought the track, Tiffany, we got Tiffany involved with Street Heat, and she's done a great job. So Florida Street Scene, local uh, group, they do car shows and yep. whatnot. And then like they do 10 years she's been doing yeah. car shows. And then they, I think her 10 year anniversary just like passed. Yep. And then they got involved with Street Heat and like Street Heat's her deal. Like me and Wade and the guys, like we just give her the place to do it and we help yep. her obviously. But like it's at this point, it's like she does it, right? And she got, we got Summit to sponsor it this year. Um, you know, their, their thing is they want to keep people off the street racing. So yeah. street heat, you come to the track and like you can do the same thing in a controlled, safe environment. And now you can get some, you know, occasionally there's purses or prizes. Like we did 4,000 bucks and or 4,000 summit bucks, which is like to the, give out to yeah, which people is like, that were fast. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. Like there's not a car person in the world that can't spend money on summit. Yep. I don't I, care. I will say though, I won it once. I was the fastest streetcar there. I don't think you got any summit bucks. No, she tried not to pay me. No. It was cash, and she had to text you and say, is Cooper's car a streetcar? Oh, yeah, I think it is. I mean, it showed up on a trailer, but, like, you know. We're going to have to. So it's funny because, like. It was an we, open trailer. <laughs> we, str- we struggle with this, though, because, again, how do you differentiate, right? And you want to. It's about inclusion, especially in an event like that. You want as many people to come as possible, and you want them to feel included and feel good about coming and racing, yeah. you know? So it's like there's a fine line. I was thinking about it the other day because me and her talked about this and Wade was talking about this. And we're like, how do we, how do we like, how do we separate this? And I think that there's going to have to be a trailer rule in there. I don't think you should be able to trailer your car into street heat and, and say that you had the fastest street car there. I think as long as you can drive back under your own power from the, if you have to be pushed back, that's where it starts to get easy for me. But like, what can't you drive back if you really wanted to? I don't know. There's people dramatic that go like 550s and don't drive their car back. They're just being dramatic. They're like, push it back. I'm like, it's a turbo Mustang with an LS. Like, dry, like what are you doing? I mean, so by your by your rule, I could bring Booger and drive it back. Sure. That's not fair, Cooper. <laughs> it's Friggin', not a street car. Um, it's Travis, street Travis won a thousand bucks the other day. And not and I, and great for him. His car is awesome. Is not it a street car? Is it a street car? Listen, no, no, seven fifty no, no, no. in that yes heat. Or, but this is a yes or no question. Is it a street car? I don't think so anymore. Exactly. If your doors come off, you ain't got no crank wind. I got crank windows at least. But uh, will you drive your car to Bradenton and try to get that thousand bucks? I time? honestly, I don't. I probably would for a thousand bucks. I probably wouldn't for a hundred bucks. Yeah, no, but <laughs> thousand, you know, for a thousand bucks, I'd drive it there and just probably have Bronte follow me with the with the truck because I need ice and stuff. Doesn't sound very street carish. Okay, I'll buy ice at the track. I don't know. It just doesn't sound very street carish. I have 15 gallon fuel. I'm just tank. saying. I think we're gonna have to brush up on those rules. But either way, it's a really cool program. Um, shout out to Summit for stepping up this year, and we're gonna, we've been giving out Summit bucks. We've got some safety stuff from them too that we're giving out to like educate people yeah. that come and like don't know that 
they need a helmet. Cause like that's supposed to be like a really welcoming event. Like we want to create new racers, new mm -hmm. members of our sport, you know? That was something me and JH talked about a little bit. We were like, how do you get somebody new? Because I, we talked about this last podcast, sorry to bring it up again, but there's a gatekeeping that happens where like some of the older guys in drag racing kind of keep some of the younger guys out in a little bit of a toxic way. And it's kind of like, how do you get them in? Because sometimes they're like, oh, stupid street car, you know, my slick tires need the rubber and they just tore, tore it up with their truck and, you know, things there's like that. There's definitely a little bit of that. Um, I don't know how, how you deal with that. I think that happens in like anything. I think I'm just more worried about how you get the new person in without feeling like an idiot when they pull up for the first time. You come to Street time. Heat or you come to Test and Tune and you start from there, you know? Um, like we pull up, ask for Sean. He'll tell you how to drag race. Will He's he? very nice about it. I don't know. Will he? <laughs> he probably sure. would. If you, it, He probably would no, give you the would. He would. And like, you know, all right, I'll give you my story. In 2005 or six, my family moved here from New York. I hated it. Okay. The only cool thing that I had going for me, I was a junior in high school. The only cool thing I had going for me was that I can get my, I could start driving here sooner than I could start driving in New York. So the first thing we did when I got here was I demanded to be taken to the DMV to get my learner's permit. Mm -hmm. And I started going to, to Bradenton in probably like 06 or 07. And I would steal my dad's car and drive it down there and race it and whatever. And man, there's guys that work at our track still that were there that day that I like my first times going and like yeah. that coached me and helped me. And it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, like Sean would do that. PD would do that. There's tons of guys like Mark would do that. There's we have we have a really good crew. We're very 100%. lucky. Wade would do that. Um, and you know, a lot of people don't have that luxury because some people work at a drag strip and they're not like into it. Like it's just a job for them. Mm -hmm. We're lucky. Like almost all of our crew is like our drag racers and they love it. So yeah, come to Bradenton. You come on like a Thursday night for a test and tune, or a sun Monday Sunday for a test and tune, or a street heat. And you come and you get your feet wet and you hopefully you're hooked and we did our job right. And then yep. we turn you into the the next Stevie Fast Drive. I think that also goes for like fans. Like if you're in the staging lanes <clears> and <throat> maybe the guy behind you doesn't seem like he's done it before. Yeah. Like don't be afraid to kind of, you know, give a little pointers here and there. And I yeah. think the the buddy system is cool. And I think like the first timers at the drag strip, maybe like a first time is free type of thing, like a drug dealer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Do the drug dealers do that? I don't even know what you're talking about. All right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how they get you in the door. <laughs> I had no idea, Coop. I, I mean, no think idea. about that. It's a great marketing strategy, oh though. Gosh. First no, time free. No, that would be cool. But how do you legitimize that it's somebody's first time? That's I right. think if they don't show up on a 275 Pro <laughs> and they show up on like a, with like a Ford Focus, that I, I think you yeah, can like, <laughs> No trailer. No drag radio. Yeah. <laughs> if I pulled up and I'm like, yeah, it's my first time, they'd be like, well, come on. It's a little far-fetched, a little hard to believe. Yeah. yeah. Something along those Wait, lines. But no, that would be cool because, cool, like, we have to, like, we have to be conscious of this. We have to, like, seriously think of how to introduce more mm -hmm. people into the sport. And not just. We should do an event like that, Cooper. We like should do first an event. timers? Yeah, like a first-timer event. And we get, like, a couple cool people that know what they're doing to mm -hmm. come and, like, teach them and, like, coach them and just, like, encourage them. I would be all for that, and I think I know some other YouTubers in the area that would be. That's it. It's gonna happen. We're gonna yeah. do it. No, seriously. Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's 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 figure out a date, mm -hmm. and let's do it on like a Sunday or like a Saturday. That's an easy day for everyone to come. It could be almost like a test and tune though. Do it on like a Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday night. Yeah. Like a Wednesday night intro to the track. Yeah. Show up with your street car, whatever you want to. Yeah. Try to break and we, the maybe beams we can with. get like Kyle to come out and give some advice. That's what I was thinking. Come out and I'll come out and like maybe we can get Cletus to come out. I think I. I think we could make it a little more interesting. What if we can get like 50 people and five coaches and have bracket teams? Like <laughs> like you get to pick your team. I mean, I would win, but and it would be really cool. No, like you pick your team and you have to coach them to win. Yeah, my like team would tree win. And stuff. Yeah, my team would win. Yeah, so you kind of have to like... <laughs> Coop, my team would win. That'd be a fun video. It would be great. It would be great. So we're going to do this. We're, yeah. We talked about it. I said it's happened now. It's official. Mm -hmm. We're going to put together an event for first timers. And we're going to get some influencers to come and teach them how to do it. Yeah, and I think making a little contest, too, like who's, yeah, we'll do some who's like group of five can, like, you know, yeah, get I mean, the best reaction times and stuff. I'm, I'm a pretty good coach. Because it doesn't matter if you Coop, do bracket I've, racing. I've coached you before. Yeah. I'm a good coach. If you bracket race, it doesn't matter what your car runs. It's true. So you can just try to be the, the tree. Hard, like, if your first time ever going to the track, you have to learn how to drag race and bracket race. Like, 
Bracket racing is... Just worry about the tree. Just so, go quickest on the green. Bracket racing is so slept on as, as far as like the difficulty. There's a reason that these people race for $100,000, $50,000, million. dollars. Like, it, it'll just be a tree race. Yeah. That's it'll probably, just be on that's the tree. Probably good. Not like trying to run Bracket your racing is yeah. not easy. Yeah. And like I don't think that those guys get enough credit. It'll be like the Copo races. Because yeah. that's how the Copo guys kind of do it. They just like... Or maybe we just like... We buy like five... Like something like all the same car, yeah. And we do something like that. There's some guys up in Clearwater that do that, where you can like. I've seen that. They hey. have like they have like Mustang, like V6 Mustangs yep. or something like that. And you yeah. can like go with like a group of people and like race well, we your should, friend. We should we should make it like an event and yeah. first time on a drag strip, it's free. That would be a lot of fun. Oh, we're gonna work on this. Yeah, something something will come. Um, I actually want to do like a documentary style video, and I want it to be what is a street car? Oh gosh. With like sitting down with like prominent people across the board and like just getting their take on like what is a street car i'd love to hear the opinions because we <laughs> have some, we even have a, a friend of ours who thinks for sure that his car is a street car a, a couple friends that are completely wrong the one i'm thinking of <laughs> yeah he's he's absolutely wrong and his car is streetable i know classes that don't understand the, yeah. the language there are some streetable cars that run sixes okay yeah. they may have like a bed on them or something i don't know uh gray in color it's a street of bull race car. Completing a drag and drive does not no. make your car a street car. No. It no. makes your car a streetable building car. building a race car that can be driven on the street is not a street car. Yeah. Because that's what it is. It like Tom Bailey's car does not fit any street car rules in the world. It is a pro mod. Yes. But he's smart. He's made it that he could drive it on the street. And that mm -hmm. has its challenges. Like, let's face it, like he struggles just like everyone else when at Sick Week. Like, he has his own struggles, too. Like, it's probably not easy to run a car that fast and then expect it to drive yeah. to wherever you're going next. Well, with big tire cars on Sick Week is they all break the transmissions because they go onto a prep track, tire shake. Yep. And that was that was the prominent theme across Sick Week. Yeah, because, I mean... Tight tracks and big tires. Yeah, radio cars did real good. They're used to, that, yeah. they're used to, like, I need no prep and I can just go on yeah, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. And once they... Yeah, it was they need, a bad. Deal. They need slick prep. Yeah. I saw quite a few do that where they just kind of it didn't really uh pan out. You can you could dedicate your next 12 episodes to trying to figure out what a street car is and you won't figure it out. Yeah. Cuz just no one will ever agree. I'm going to have Brett and Jim on oh, and I'll ask them cuz one of them has a street car, streetish. <laughs> streetish. Yeah. I'll let you pick. <laughs> yeah. It was up at um they actually were running NHRA let. I saw that. That was really cool. So so well, I guess I didn't. I don't pay too much attention to stuff because I'm just a busy person. But it looked like the streetcar takeover guys were able to get like a group or a small class yep. at an NHRA event. Yep, like 20 cars or something. That's awesome because like that does exactly what we're talking about. Be a little bit of like a class, like a like a exhibition filler in yeah. a way. But I mean, we, it was 850 limited though. But we put cars that people would normally not see. On NHRA in mm -hmm. front of you know at an NHRA event in front of their faces televised and we, deal yeah televised deal and people may see see that and be like man you know like that's relatable I have I have a Mustang mm -hmm. you're telling me I, I somebody might have a twin turbo Mustang and like they just never taken it down the track yeah. and they may see it and be like wow I could drag race and it could turn into something so that's really cool so that actually brings up an, a very difficult point with cars right now is fast is easy safe is really expensive like it it's very easy to build an eight second Mustang. Cars are just getting too fast. Like it's so easy to go that fast. But I mean, you could like just buy a car and it's like silly fast. Like, like faster than your your regular car should be able to go on the yeah. track, safety wise. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's like, and honestly, like I, I would argue that it was more f fun when the cars were slower anyway. But like you can buy a McLaren and it goes nine stock. You yeah. can buy, you know, a uh, a, a GT500 and goes low tens stock. Yep. You know, it's like an $85,000 Ford. Like, I mean, cars are just getting too fast. You can buy a Tesla Plaid to the nine second car. But even like the cost, like you can buy like a, like a Mustang that is 40 grand. You're making mm -hmm. payments on it. You put a, a Vortec, Pro Charger, whatever, blower on it mm -hmm. out of a kit you put in your one car garage and suddenly you can almost go, you could probably go eight. Yeah. That's crazy. That like for super cheap on payments. And it's tough because like think about it from the track perspective. So we need as many people to come as possible, right? That's to yeah. keep the places open and to keep them profitable. So you don't want to turn people down, turn people away. You also want them to be safe. Yep. What do you do? I know you get into this really tough situation. You either 
that's why I guess maybe eighth mile tracks can kind of get away with that a little better. You're not getting that mile an hour. I don't know why the lights are flickering, but that's, but you don't get character. that mile an hour out of it. So maybe you can kind of skate by. Some people put no time on their car and try to get away with stuff. It doesn't work. <laughs> Sir, we know how fast you went. <laughs> <laughs> like you see a car power wheelie yeah, in like, second gear and like, you're like, oh, he's, he's safe. <laughs> like, listen, like, if you put no time on the side of your car, Cooper, we still know that it's too fast. <laughs> or no, this is a good one. If, if your car isn't safe enough to drag race, you roll race and go the same mile an hour. That is so silly. <laughs> that is just so silly. The only, like, thing, the only reason you should roll race. And they race, make it longer. Yeah, the only reason. Oh, my gosh. The only reason you should roll race instead of drag racing is if, like, you're scared to break something, maybe. But you should still have, I mean, it should carry the same safety requirements. But it's hard because as much as we want to build the sport, we need to introduce more street cars and welcome more street cars. But these guys will fight you tooth and nail that they're not putting a roll cage in the car. And to be fair, if you if your car is a legitimate street car and you're driving around with a 10-point cage or a funny car cage and you get into an accident, you're going to get hurt. You don't have a helmet on. You don't have a Hans yeah. on. You don't have a harness on gonna get hurt the cage will hurt you yeah it's not ideal to do that so it's a it's a the streetcar thing is tricky it's really tricky that's why you're almost better off at this level just not buying a new car and trying to build like a street car out of it because it's gonna be too fast yeah buy a 240 buy an old fox yeah. body you know you could buy cages for some of these cars like literally pre-bent and like go somewhere and have it welded in safely because there are some people that have yep. messed that up too mm-hmm. And just, you know, and build something like that. LS swap, 2J swap, Coyote swap. Doug Cook said at one time to me, he was like, friends don't let friends put 850 cages in their car. Because you know, we all know. We all know each other, at least. It's pretty crazy that that's a thing. Because that should be enough cage for a lot of people. It's never enough. But it's a slippery slope. And this stuff is like, this is just an addicting sport. It's a slippery slope. So I guess basically never enough. From everybody that I know that was like, put an 850 cage in my car, good for a while, is like going, like, I mean, frick when we took my car out. What does that say, though? So, like, people are, like, just building seven-second cars? Like, just, like, nothing now? Yeah, but, like, an unopened LS can do that. An unopened 2J can basically do that. Cars are getting too You could probably take a 2J and not take the cylinder head off it, put some head studs in it. You don't even have to. You don't even have to do that. <laughs> if the car is loud enough, you can If it's a 240 it, yeah. Yeah. and you put a 2J in it with a 76 millimeter turbo yeah, with a A340, yeah. <laughs> you can go sevens. And and the problem is if, if that guy came to you and he was like, this is my setup, you'd be like, it has to run sevens. Yeah. You'd be like, if it doesn't, you're, what are you doing wrong? Yeah. Cars are just getting too fast. But so there's also been some leniency from NHRA as far as like the safety rules. Not leniency, with the but the newer cars, right? Yeah, with the newer cars, they revisited that, which thank God, like that was that was awesome for street cars. Yeah, it was funny. I remember when that was happening, people were like fighting it and saying, "Oh, that's not going to happen." And another, but like, it had to. Yeah. Literally, we're buying nine and ten second cars from the showroom, <laughs> like you know what I mean, and mm-hmm. and they're super safe. Like they have airbags all over them, great seats. Like you know what I mean. Like they're super safe cars. Tell them they can't. You can't buy a Tesla and go to the drag strip. You can't buy a McLaren and go to the drag strip. You can't buy a Porsche and go to the drag strip. You can't buy a GT500 and go mm-hmm. to the drag strip. What the hell? What's the message? Well, they know if you crash your Dodge Demon or your Hellcat. Yep. They know what it's going to do in a crash. Yeah. If some guy they puts know. a cage yep. in it, they actually they don't know. That's yeah. more of like a mystery now and yeah. more dangerous. Yeah. 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 You don't know what's going to happen. Your door bars are going to fold in. Something shout crazy. Out, shout out to the NHRA for doing that. Yeah, that was a good deal on them. That was so good for our sport. I think long term, that's going to be like really, really good. Yeah, I think that'll help a lot because yeah. now that we're getting into those new cars that are affordable for almost anyone. Yeah. They're going to be more and more prominent. And as the cars get newer and more safety regulations, it might change again. Yeah. But NHRA also kind of has their back up against the wall, and they need to do something to, like, bring some new... I, I yeah, say I mean, that, but then the Gator Nationals was the biggest ever. Yeah, yeah. I but mean, I don't know what the average age of the attendant was. That's a good point. So it's 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 not solely on NHRA. It's on all of us, but, like, we have to do our part, and we have to continue to grow this sport. And, like, drag racing had an amazing year. And the year's not over yet, but like an amazing year. And I and I always say, and I was just saying this on the West Buck show, that like how the year starts really like 
kind of sets the tone for the whole year. So we had World Series of Pro Mod. March, it was our, like, one of our first races of the year. First big race of the year. It was absolutely sick. And I looked at West and I was like, we just set the tone for the whole year. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that, like, to an extent, we did. And all the events that were good and successful in the beginning of the year, they, like, it just gets everyone amped up. And this has been an amazing year for drag racing. We've, I mean, you've seen, it's not, it's uh, no prep kings, NHRA, small outlaw tracks like ours. You're seeing these places just get packed. And it's awesome. Well, when I had Cameron Johnson on, mm-hmm. he was telling me about how every chassis shop basically in the country that does good work is two years out. Yeah. And to me, that just says, we got two more years of really good racing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. If, if you're two years out, then there's somebody in line right now yeah, that's yeah, itching yeah. to get in. Yeah. Or they're already racing, and they're just building their next car, which a lot of them probably There's a lot do. of bottlenecks in our industry. That's a big one. And after COVID, it's, it didn't get better. Um, got worse. There's a lot of bottlenecks. We need quality to, work is yeah is yeah, a dwindling yeah. world. Yeah. So it's I don't know. I don't know. Am I here as a track owner or as a shop owner? Both. You're here as a car guy. I, I mean, you, guy. you're a racer too. So like you can be you could you could come in three different times and wear three different hats. Yeah. So Today you got your induction <laughs> shirt on. Yeah. Next week you could have your BMP shirt. On. Man, it's uh, <laughs> as a shop owner and a car guy. It's kind of sad to see some of the work that some of these people pull out, put out. Yeah. Just because, like, some of it is, like, safety stuff. I saw somebody posted, like, a cage the other day that they were, like, cutting out of a car, and it was, like, this cage was, like, the main hoop had, like, a cut in it that they just, like, tack welded. Mm. Like, come on, man. Yeah, that you know should I mean? definitely be one So, like, there's just stuff like that that's happening, and, like, it's just mind-blowing to me. But it's just, I don't know, man. Like, that's the, I see stuff like that, and it irks me, like, that's not good for us. That's yeah. not good for our sport. You have a unique insight, at probably most track owners don't have, where you also help racers and you build cars, and then you also race yourself yeah. around the country and other racetracks, where yeah. a lot of track owners, I feel like they do this thing where they get in their own bubble. Yeah. They never go to another racetrack. Yeah. I, I wish I can go to more races because I feel like I take something from all of them. Mm-hmm. Like I may go to a track and just see like how they pair cars and be like, that's brilliant. It's a little faster. Or I might see, hey, you guys could do it this way, and I mean, maybe they're open to the input. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love it. If I had more time, I'd go to even more racers or more races. But I do have, like, I've always said it's kind of like an upper hand in a way. I have something there because, you know, like, for an example, when we do an event, I've sponsored events before, and I've also now I'm approaching people to sponsor my event. Yeah. So, like, I know when I sponsored, what didn't I like? What did I like? Did I feel like I got, you know, enough bang for my buck? Did I feel involved in the event or whatever? So, like, I have that unique vision or that I've seen both sides of it. And, and it comes in handy in a lot of what I do, and I think that's why I was able to be successful as a track owner pretty early on. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I've, I'm have i just, like, in this industry. I don't even know. Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, like, everywhere. Yeah, very deep-rooted I'm in just it. in it. Yeah, yeah, Does yeah. it... Um, I love it. So, <laughs> you... Northeast guy, how sad is that all making you? How sad is it that the Northeast is losing racing? Like you, I, we we both grew up on Long Island. Yeah, like you went to that track. I never went there. I okay. legitimately don't think like I think that I'm not the same since Long Island Dragway closed in like 2000 and like dude, this got to be like 05 or something like that. Yeah, it was no, it was probably like 01. I, I never made it there, unfortunately. Yeah, so like I grew up going there and going to English Town, and occasionally we would go to Acco. I've been to Maple Grove. Um, shout out to my pops because he's the real one because he like he it's his fault and he, he's the reason that I'm so yep. like in love with this sport him and all his friends growing up and everything but I don't think I'm the same from Long Island Dragway closing and then English Town closing and now Akko like it's heartbreaking and Akko was really cool because Akko was like a really good location Akko was like you were close to Pennsylvania you were close to Connecticut you're close to New York like it was pretty a really good location and it was a good facility, but I don't know the real reasoning behind why they closed or what caused them to close, but it's sad. I mean, the, I think the sadder reality for me is that knowing what it takes to build a drag strip yeah, and knowing that it's most likely not going to happen in the Northeast anytime soon or ever. That's like, that's heartbreaking. 
Yeah, I mean, if you look at the whole Northeast, they're so scattered with drag strips. And Florida is really easy to get around. Mm -hmm. Like, we can get up to the Panhandle of Florida yeah. fairly quickly. The Northeast is not as easy to traverse. No, like, I mean, you can to be... To get to a drag strip. You can be, like... If you're on Long Island somewhere, like Central Long Island, you're screwed. No, so you could be on Long Island, and you're, like, 60 or 70 miles from Echo, and it'll take you three or four hours to get there. Mm-hmm. So, you have to uh, trailer through basically the city, dude. Over the worst bridges ever. It's really not looking good up there for like the sport, and it's kind of sad. And like, you know, I was excited in a way because in the last probably like year or two, um, Chris Miller Racing bought the Pan Ams event, and he, or he yeah. took over the Pan Ams, uh, Fall Nationals, Spring Nationals. They have a couple events, and he took that over, and like he was breathing new life into the sport in the Northeast and the Northeast needs it so desperately. Like yeah. if you're in the Northeast, you either have to like travel to Florida or race at world cup finals. And so like that started to change a little bit and I was really excited for that. But his home track was, was echo. And now he's, you know, he's moved around. He's going to do a couple of events and I think Rockingham and then uh, Maple Grove. But it's like, it's just not, it's not looking good up there, man. And then, like, street so racing sad. is a huge problem up there. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to get better anytime soon. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's heartbreaking, man. English Town makes me a little sad because, like, it's still there. You know that only reason And I they play, drift on yeah, it. No, listen, Like, listen, why can't we listen, share? Listen, when I see... I, I don't know what the story is. I was told that they sold, like, a portion of the property for, like, an auction or something like that. And it's, like, the shutdown. It's so stressful, man. I only play the lottery because if I win, I'm convinced I'm going to reopen English Town. I'm not even joking. It's like there. Like you can literally go race on it. And listen, I would... Just put some walls up. I would pay you any amount of money in the world to find somebody who had been to an event in English Town and then tell you different than what I'm about to say. English Town was amazing. That place was a vibe. Like that was one of the coolest drag strips in the world. The tower, when you see the two cars uh -huh. pulling out from under the tower, the noise, like, it sounds different. The st the grandstands were awesome. Like, that track was sick. Like, if you, if I were to build a track today, I would try to find the plans for English Town yeah. and, and, and replicate that track. Well, I know it's great because when, like, Formula Drift goes there and Adam LZ just had an event there and stuff, and they seem like it's a great place. Dude, like, they make it look so great for drifting. Place, so, like, the, the vibe has held in motorsports. That place is a vibe, man. <gasps> that man. place is like is like motorsports sacred grounds. Like, that place is awesome. It's cool that it's still there because there's there, a chance. If I went there and watched people drift there, I would cry. There's always a chance, though, because it's still there. It's not... Like, PBIR, they're like, it's never going to be a track again. It's not looking good for PBIR. No. No. But at least PBIR, like, yeah, it's three and a half hours from here. And, you know, there's people, think about it, there's people that live two hours south of there that probably went there. Mm -hmm. But at least they have OSW, they have Bradenton, yep. they have Gainesville, whatever. Dude, they got nothing up there. Or, like, Houston. Like, you know that's never going to be a track again. No, but there's lots of drag strips in Texas. Yes. Lots. But like, it's also very big, very spread yeah, out. Yeah, but there's still, there, dude, there's probably like eight drag strips, and probably we don't know about yeah. three of them in in, in uh, Texas. Yeah, they have like some backwoods tracks. Dude, they have some sick tracks. Florida doesn't have like some backwoods tracks like we, that. We, we got a couple. We had Lakeland, dude, Lakeland was awesome. Yep. That's like an Amazon warehouse now. Mm -hmm. uh, Showtime, give them their, their props. I mean. I've never been to Immokalee. I want to yeah, go. Yeah, I want to go to Immokalee too because honestly, I've heard that it's like super cool. Because I don't know if you know, it's like an air, it's like an airstrip. Yeah, and they just like build a section of it to be a drag strip. I like that. And then I guess in some point in the recent history, they had to move it to like a different part of the airport, which is like so cool to me. <laughs> they just moved it. Yeah, they're like, all right, guys, we got to up and move everything. Dig so a like, hole for the tree. <laughs> move a tower and like put the timing system up. I don't know like the specifics of it, but I've heard it's super cool and I've heard good things about yeah. those guys down there. So we should support them too. Um, but yeah, man, like the Northeast, I don't know. It's uh, I'm happy that I, I moved down here when I did because like think about how we just talked about it. I'm like so into motorsports and drag racing. I don't know what I'd be doing with myself if I lived in the Northeast. Yeah, I mean, either. I don't know. Shoot, I would be really screwed. I was far. <laughs> For me to go to a drag strip was like, yeah. you might as well just drive to Florida. <laughs> so there is something cool out in Long Island now, though. They, like, made, like, a little, like, kind of like a Mockley. Yep. Yep. It's uh, well, Calverton, right? Calverton, yeah. 
Yeah, so kind of like a little backwoods. What's so funny about that is that by the jail. Long, long time ago, I was in New York for something, and I was invited to like the street race. And I'm like, "Where's it at?" They're like, "Oh, it's out in Long Island." I'm like, "Where's it at?" And like nobody would tell you where it was, right? They're just like people like dropping pins and sending you locations. Yeah. And we drove like an hour out there, and like could not find it. We like could hear the cars, we could hear tire screeching, we could not find it. And it was Calverton that they were racing at. And yep. now I guess they do it like legit, which is pretty cool. And hopefully that turns into something. Like I know that those those people are like really fighting to have a drag strip in Long Island and it needs it. Um hopefully that turns into something, man. I forget the guy's name. He came to one he came to if I'm not mistaken, he came to our hearing with Manatee County. Oh, did he? And he talked and everything. Huh. Yeah. Well, if you're listening, hit me up. Love to have you on. Yeah, I think, he, I think, he, I think he lives down here, and they have, like, this thing. It's like uh, Long Island needs a drag strip. It's, yep. like, on Facebook or whatever. Um, and Long Island does need a damn drag strip, so good for them. You know what we completely forgot about, too? Mod Knots. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's or awesome. Nats, Mod Knots, whatever they call mod, it. Mod Nats. Mod Nats. Yeah, it's the Nationals. Mod Nationals, yeah. yeah. So that's going to be a great yeah, race yeah, as that's, well. That's a really cool race. Justin is awesome. Yeah. Um, I've become a Mustang fan in yeah. my recent years. It's uh, hard not to be. Yep, they're awesome cars. They make of, it hard not of, to be a fan. Yeah, a lot of bang for the buck. And we have so many Mustang shops in our area, which mm. that's probably like everywhere. Yeah. Like probably every state yeah. has like four or five Mustang shops like in their city. I don't Ford know. made a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, it's a good market to be in. It's a really cool event. I've actually like wanted to attend while, when it was at SGMP. And I've always been like, I pay attention like, if I if I pay attention to something like that mm-hmm. we're not doing at our place, that's a big deal for me because I, I'm just, again I'm just a really busy person. I've always paid close attention to that race and how Justin Young does it and like how he runs it yep. and what people say about him. And I've heard like amazing things. I've seen amazing things. I'm really 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 excited to have that here. I've been talking to him about him coming on. Oh, you gotta have him. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I I told this to JH the other day. I want to make a point of making sure when somebody says about an event to actually shout it out. Yeah. So people understand, like people yeah. know about it and tracks too the same way. Like, yeah. I don't want to be like, Oh, I went to some event. That was great. No, yeah. tell me the name of it. I want people to know. So we're going to shout out a couple events right now. Good events deserve about. to be talked. We about. should shout out events right now. And we should, sh- not just mine. We should yeah. shout out events. So I'm going to do mine and then I'll help you do some others. Okay. So FL2K, October 5th through 8th. Fantastic event. Got everything you need. My favorite. Street cars, roll racing, drag racing, Awesome mm-hmm. vendors, amazing sponsors, like really cool cars. Can't miss it. Yeah. Mod Nats, November. Yep. Uh, Out for Blood is Troy's, Troy Jr.'s um, No Time Race, end of October. I got destroyed last time I went there. <laughs> <laughs> Great No Time Race. Great No Time Race to see a lot of grudge action there. Yeah. Uh, we have a bunch of bracket stuff, all winter. Yeah, the bracket program is huge. I didn't realize that at first. I didn't realize that, well, I knew I that BMP either, be had fair. a good one, but I didn't realize that other big tracks didn't have, like, bracket programs. Yeah, I kind of yeah, thought it was yeah, at every yeah, yeah. track. To be fair, I had no idea when I bought Bradenton how awesome the, the bracket program could be and how awesome it was. Yeah. And, again, I, like, I just don't think those guys get enough A ton credit. of juniors. Yeah, no, our junior dragster program is sick. Our good money program, getting great. given out. Great, like, I'm talking, like, some of the best racers that I've ever seen drive mm-hmm. bracket cars. Yep. Like they are really good, and and some of these guys and girls that drive these juniors, they they are the I, like I'm not just saying this; they are the future of our sport. They're going to be really yep. good. They all are the, already really all good. the best racers that I know that are like grown now started bracket racing. Yeah, and it's second nature to them yes. when you line up with them. You know, yeah, you know when you just got killed on the tree. Oh, you're like, like, oh, that guy was a. Bracket I'll be honest. Kid. Like, if you get some bracket racers to get in, like front wheel drive that I'm racing at the moment, I'd be shook. I'd be like, man, that guy's going to kill me on the street yep. every time we go up there. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's like a deep-seated thing that gets driven yep. into you. Yep. And then, so then we have Snowbirds in December, uh, U.S. Street Nationals in January. Pro Mods will be at both of those. Yep. Uh, Streetcar Takeover. I well, think Night they, of Fire, too. Yeah, Night of Fire. Snowbirds and Night of Fire. So it's like two events in one. Yeah. That's, I think, what I love about the Snowbirds so Night much. of Fire is a must experience. Night of Fire is the Saturday of the Snowbirds, and it's an event in itself. Mm-hmm. And we're like we're doing some cool stuff, so I'm gonna we're, we'll be announcing all of it soon. But like we're changing up the jet show this year a little bit, mm. and we're adding some things to it. 
Um, and I'm trying to add one more key component to it that would be really the, cool. The stands, yeah. I, I love that event because the stands filled with kids. Yeah, yeah, kids, yeah. Kids, yeah, yeah. like, yep. and they just love it. And it's so cool because, like, when the cars are racing, there's people in the stands and, like, whatever, but there's always people moving around and walking around. When you say it's time for, like, the jet show, it doesn't matter where everyone's at. They yep. come out of the woodwork. So it's like the stands are, like, okay, and then you look back and they're just packed. It's really cool. Yep. Uh, so then U.S. Street, Streetcar Takeover, I think, is January. Well, I think we no, skipped February. one, too, that is probably not on the schedule yet, but I'm sure it will be, the Christmas tree race. The Christmas tree race, dude. That is <laughs> Such a good race. event. So and, unsurprisingly great. So good. <laughs> it's so good. And to be fair, it's like, we're going to do better of it this year, but, like, we always kind of, like, it's Garrett's idea. It was Garrett and Alan's idea. Yep. Um, but, like, it's always, like, just kind of thrown together. It's like November, like, hey, are we going to do the Christmas tree race? So, like, it's locked in. We're doing it this year for mm -hmm. sure. We have some new things in the works for that as well. Well, a lot of people, awesome race. Alan's move was, like, oh, a lot of people are going to plan their trips to visit their in-laws or something yeah, in yeah, Florida yeah. in December. Yep. So let's try to get them to the track on a weekday. So cool. <laughs> but it's another way. That like at you know at first like when it was first talked about it was it sounded silly but it's another way to get new people to oh the it's track. silly for it's sure silly. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded silly because it is <laughs> but it's like demolition drag racing you remember when we first talked about demolition drag racing I think yeah. we, this was like this was a while ago that was silly as well and and I I don't remember who it was who said it at that ta we were sitting at the table and it might have been Alan who actually said it and I thought he was joking so I'm like looking and I'm like ha 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 and we did it and it was awesome and like we yeah. were that that made it like that was like news like i think it was on like jalopnik like yeah that like was it everywhere was, it was all over all like the major car yeah deals yeah, at yeah, the time yeah. were covering that yeah. and it was cool because it was a it was a big thing that kind of helped us transition into the burnout stuff yeah because yep. it was just a small burnout pit but and again, then the burnout pit grew and yeah. squashed demolition drags but it was tons of people who would not normally come to a drag show yep and like, you know, that's something that like I always say that Cletus does a really good job of is he put he shines a lot of light on our sport and probably introduces it to a lot of people that would 100%. not normally watch it, you know, because like I feel like there's tons of channels that do it, but there are a lot of channels that you go to that channel for drag racing content. Yep. People don't go to his channel for that. They just get it. They, that's what they. That's what they're given when they're there. He plays in the world of mainstream. Yeah. Whereas most yeah. of us play in just the car world. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So like, you know, let's say fifty percent of his followers are just mainstream. You know, whatever yep. followers that just heard about this guy. They think he's funny and they follow. Now they're into drag racing. Like literally, they're like, man, you, they're they're in these groups. They're like, man, there's no drag racing content going on right now. What's going on? Like, dude, it's hot and it rains every day. Mm -hmm. But like, they're wanting drag racing content. Yeah. It's like, that's awesome. It is cool that they're like craving that. Yeah. Like to me, that's like, that's so cool yep. for our sport. And, you know, we need spectators just as much as we need racers. A hundred percent. I mean, I, I think. Actually, maybe more. <laughs> yeah. I love when there's spectators there, of yeah. course. And I also am constantly thinking what keeps them in the seats yeah, yeah. because there's so much entertainment now. There's so many yeah. distractions. Like it's tough to sit there for it's that It's easy long. to be distracted. Yeah. That's, I mean. There's just so many things going on. The world has just changed in so many ways. Yeah, and I think a lot of drag strips need to kind of try to keep up a little bit yeah. with like the with yeah. everything. And there's some debates that come in with that. With do you live stream? Yeah. Do you not live stream? All right. So I'm gonna. We should talk about this. My boy Lou is out there. Lou's the man. All the time. Lou's the man. Shout out to Lou Tube because Lou, he Lou's live feeds constantly at the drag strip. Yeah, he's at every street he. All across um, Florida. All the no-time events and stuff. Yeah, no, yeah, it's not just BMP. Does he do OSW? I don't know. Yeah, he, he goes does. to OSW. He goes to... Um, that guy's doing God's work. Yeah. That's my opinion. So, like, if we're talking about live feeds, so... In He's the got sponsors on the live yeah. feed. In the beginning, I was one of those guys, like, oh, man, why would you give them a live... Especially then, it was free. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it was speed video at the time. Yeah. Why would you give people a free way to watch your race? They're not going to come. And the more I thought about it, I was like... That's kind of silly. I think it's the opposite. I think it's a marketing tool. And I think that, again, we just need more eyes on us. We need more eyes on our sport. And however we do that, however we achieve it, whatever, so be it. But I feel like, actually, I know because it's happened to me. If I go on Flow Racing now and I watch a race that I'm like just curious about because I heard about it, let's say like Yellow Bullet Nationals. Last year, I watched Yellow Bullet Nationals on Flow Racing. Yeah. 
or PDRA uh, finals. Mm -hmm. And I'm like watching, you know what I'm saying to myself the entire time? Next year, I'm not going to miss this race. I'm going to be there because this Mm -hmm. is a great race. And that's what I think it is. Like people that are going to go to your event, I I believe that they're going regardless. And the people that aren't, we're just giving them that can't for whatever reason. We're giving them an opportunity to be a part of. Yeah, it. that's and my opinion. It makes sense because like ninety percent of the people that are watching aren't gonna go because they're way too far. They can't for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, it's not realistic. It's not feasible. It's not possible because of work. They're sick. Whatever it is, but they're gonna watch. And if you do your job and it's a good, good, a good production live feed, so Flow has to do their part, and it's yeah. a good event. We're creating more fans. I will say, Flo has stepped it up yes, in the they last have. in they the have. last year. And they have started and doing you know, the pit side interviews. Yep. They don't show tractors as much. Yep, and we've been on them about that stuff. Not just myself, like you know, a lot of the promoters. Like, hey, like mm-hmm. we're for this movement, but it's got to be, you know, it's got to be good. And like, it's just one of those things. They need the support to get to that point. Yeah, but it's getting great. And like, what people don't realize about Flo is, Flo has been doing live feeds forever of tons of other sports. They have like. MMA fights on yeah. flow. They have dirt car racing. They have, you know, you name it, they have it. They cover tons of things. Drag racing is like that much of flow racing. But what does that mean? If you have a flow uh, membership and you're a regular, you know, a regular on flow, you log into flow at any time and you may bump into a drag race. And now these hundreds of thousands of people that would not normally see a drag race are seeing a drag race. Yeah. So it's, it's more awareness. So like, I, I think we can attribute that to the growth that we see in the sport, that no prep kings, the power of social media. A lot of these guys are starting to market themselves really well. Um, like locally, we have Justin Swanstrom, who yep. runs no prep kings. You should have him on here. He's he good. was on. He was? Yeah. I missed He'll him. be back. He's cool. Yeah. So, but like, I'm not a huge fan of like the no prep stuff, just whatever, for whatever reason. I've just never really got too into it. But... I've been watching Justin Swanstrom race for a long time. Yeah, he's raced everything, him and yeah, his dad. Yeah, and they're, and they're both great at what they do. They're real racers. But they market themselves now so much more than a lot yep. of other people do. And that, you know, so now that's just another person that's promoting drag racing. I compare No Prep Kings to WWE. Yeah, but I, it's and, in a good way. Yeah, oh, WWE is like, a, you should study that. Yeah, no, To sure. see how, what Vince McMahon Correct. did. Because and he that's what we took lack. over the 2000s. Correct. <laughs> and that's what we lack in, dra- in mainstream drag racing. We lack a little bit of that. Mm-hmm. I feel like you want it to be like, you want your race to have this like prestige and you want people to feel like it's, you know, a big deal in it. And it is. But we lack a little bit of that showmanship. Yeah. And the trash talk, the competitiveness, the grudges, that stuff is great. And yeah, you're right. No Prep Kings, they, they don't lack that at all. Yeah. Oh and, no, they're great. And at like, it. and again, I'm not a huge fan of no prep racing just because like I've always just been into like the opposite of that. I've always been into like small tire radial stuff. I've just been into mm-hmm. different things. I respect it. Those guys drive the wheels off of those things. They got a tune, like different, uh, way harder probably than a lot of people. They've got their work cut out for them. But I will definitely say they have helped grow drag racing in the last couple of years. Drastically, when we had them at Bradenton, dude, it was insane. And they're actually fast. They they're are actually, very they fast are, cars. They are insanely fast. They I are pro them. mod level. They are oh, they well easy. They're, they're easy touching on pro. My mod pro stuff. mod guys would beat the crap out of them. Now that being said, they're close and they are extremely fast. I think faster than most people even realize. They're playing in close to that on their big tire, no prep. I, you know, I. I'm, you're, you're I'm guessing wrong. they're going 90s. They probably go 80s, but that's not that close in the grand scheme of things. No, it's If not. you run a 380 and I run a 360 something, there's going to be a huge gap at the other other end of the track. But like, they would at, bottom qualify. Yeah. At, but uh, actually, what well, we've been hold on, hold on, we've been down this road. We have the data to to to, to, to discuss true. this. So Justin Swanstrom, my boy. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was Snowbirds or U.S. Street, one of the two. He came and he took weight as much weight as he could out of his yeah. car and like you know was within the rules and whatever. The steel roof makes it. And tough. I think yeah it does. And I think one year he qualified like number like thirty two, mm-hmm. and then last year he 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 was like number thirty three or thirty four. So he's he's right there. 
He's right the, there. They have a steel roof, which steel it, roof, steel in quarters. that car actually, and it probably changes some of the geometry, yeah. and you can't get as aggressive and whatnot. And it's probably a ton of work. Like his dad's a beast. Like his dad tunes his car. His dad, yeah. his dad did a great job. And I and I truly believe that nobody else would have gone faster than they went with what they had, but just the no prep cars are just a little bit behind my yep. pro mod boys. I they, put my pro mod are. boys and girls up against whoever. No, they they definitely are. They're they're. Another question that I often pose to people is, what do you consider the apex of drag racing? Like, when, when kids are watching, you know, football as a kid, mm -hmm. you know exactly what the top-level football player is. Yeah. You know where it is. It's, it's you're in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. Like, when you're a drag racer like me, I, you know, I'm pretty entry-level. Mm, a little more than entry-level. I'm not entry-level, but in most events, if, you, like... I'm probably, you know, FL2K, I'm probably not in the fastest group. Yeah, yeah. I don't run, I I don't saying, run the though. Pro Mod stuff. Yeah. Like, I don't run LDR, yeah, Ultra yeah, Street. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's more entry level. Like, the mm -hmm. next step up for my car is those events. Yeah. So, where is the Apex then? Is it just different for everyone? I think it is because I think it's... What, I don't want to be in a top fuel car. I don't yeah, really like, care for like, that. Like, like to me, I think top fuel, like, so I think that if you ask, like, if you're walking down the street and you stop somewhere, like, hey, man, you know about drag racing? They'll be like, yeah, John Force, top yep. fuel. You know what I mean? And that's awesome. I think that's, like, what everyone thinks of when they think of drag racing, people that don't, like, know. You couldn't put me in a top fuel car. And I'm, I love drag racing. I want to drive pretty much everything. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't put me in a top fuel car. You couldn't put me in a funny car. Like, that's just not my thing. That's, like, that's too much for me. So I don't know what the apex is. It's interesting because it's almost different for everyone, which is a, it's weird to have a subjective peak of a sport. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Like to like a to lot me, of people, it just be pro my, mod. My, mine is pro mod. Yeah, I can, I can, I can relate to pro mod a little bit. I've also just fallen in love with pro mod for a long time. It was RVW. Yeah, RVW was quite cool. a few years. I like pro mod better. And like I said, I put my pro mod boys and girls up against anybody. Of course, but the They'll, classes have changed. Yeah, no, for sure. They evolve over time. Some disappear. Sure. Yeah, 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 for sure. But I think for me, it's pro mod. I think like, yeah, it's different for everyone, man. Because like, probably, honestly, if I didn't have the involvement I have with pro mod, for me, it would be like X275. Yeah. Forever, that was like, man, if you could race X275, that was like a street style pro mod. You know what I mean? Like that was like, as close as you can get to a street car, like you could turn your car into an X275 car. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like to me, that was super relatable. You can do it with pretty much any kind of car. Um, and super fast. You don't need like two semis to go run it. It's close, man. Now you're getting there. <laughs> it's close. But man. like if you're top fuel, you're like, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I need six that's semi next. trucks and three Dude, engines that's and 25 so next, guys. That's so next level. But we need that. Like yeah. we just need each tier of this sport. I hope Clay comes and races because I want him on the podcast really bad. Me and him talk all the time. Yeah, yeah, Clay, yeah. Is Clay, Clay is awesome. Clay is like Clay is like a like Sam. Like he's just one of those dudes that he yep. talks to everybody, like shows everybody the same amount of love, and he means it. He's a great yep. dude, great dude, and a great ambassador of our sport. Couldn't yeah. get better. There's there's a bunch of we we are actually really in a good spot right now because we have a bunch of really good ambassadors. Yeah, we do. Uh, Smoke. Yep. Yeah, yep. he's been yeah. campaigning like crazy for and drag racing. And he's heavily involved with this this race that we're yep. doing in, in uh, February. Um, Wes is obviously a huge part of it. Yep. Even like those are high level, but then like people like Garrett, James, like those yeah. guys in the small tire. Dude, drag stuff. racing is in a great spot. It is. Like but then the tracks just bright. need to keep up. Man. <laughs> Dude, I don't know, man. <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. We got a lot of people. We just need the tracks. I don't know what the answer is there, but I mean, th there's definitely a struggle that, okay, so I'm going to assume that Echo closed because it was sold for a figure that made no sense to keep it as a drag strip, yep. right? Let's just, that's the assumption. So we'll it's roll with probably that. Probably a good one. So that's the, that's a problem. There's you're you're saying that there's not enough money in the business to even justify the land. My theory is with these tracks is zoning is incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. Going to your county, especially in the Northeast, mm -hmm. getting a piece of land rezoned. Mm -hmm. Drag strips have this unique zoning where they already make a 
environmental impact so you can buy them and put a junkyard or car storage of some sort. But that's my point. But that's because they make zoning so hard that they make drag strips so alluring. So it's like this this roundabout my point, way. My point is that I guess it comes down to the fact that some drag strips do not make enough money operating as a drag strip. And that's a problem. Mm-hmm. So what do you do? Do we all start raising prices? I don't think that's the answer. You know, it's obviously yeah. expensive to do a lot of these events and with these huge payouts and just, you know, there's a lot of entertainment value and there's a lot of money that goes into pr- producing, you know, to producing these shows. And that's what they are. They're shows. Yeah. So it's a production. Um, to me, I mean, we're blessed in, in, in Bradenton that like we're not there right now. You know, like we have a great following, great crowds great amount of racers, bracket, and like, we're so lucky because we cover it all. We have small tire racing, street car racing, roll racing, bracket racing, juniors, you name it, we're going to have now mm-hmm. top fuel and funny car. Like, we literally are like, dude, Jet we're cars. probably one of the luckiest, like, sometimes, like, when I'm saying it, I, I'm like freaking out because I'm like, we're like the luckiest drag strip in the country. Yep. We have all of it, and we have so much of a fan base to support it. We have YouTube. You, you can go to our track on like a random Thursday night and bump into like Kyle, you, Cletus, James. Like our place is just happening like all the time. Yeah. There's always but cool there's, cars there too. Correct. Not even like no, us. Tons, like there's tons. always like cool yes. things. I show up and I'm like, I've never seen that car in my life around okay, here. But here's the thing is that it's not like that everywhere. Yeah. I know a lot of people that like race in Virginia or North Carolina and They'll tell me all the time. They're like, "Oh, I hate that track. I hate that." Like, you should never say that. But but if you some like drag tracks, racing. You know, some tracks that. cause that. Like, some tracks are stepping on their own feet. Yeah, and so, they don't make it easy on the drivers. They don't make it easy to show up and be a spectator. You know what's funny is that you say that. Um, and we were just talking about English Town a little while ago. So when I was growing up, the reason that we all would, you know, the people that I knew that would race would all go to Long Island drag strips so much and English Town not as much was because English Town was a strict track. Yeah. That was their reputation. And <laughs> to be fair, when I was growing up and people were talking about English Town, it wasn't usually nice words they were using. Yeah. And it was the nicest track. But, the but like, they, they took it too far almost. Like, some of the stories that I remember hearing, like, they were, like, insane about well, this. Well, there's track. another prominent track in Florida that also gets questionable reputation because they don't do many events. Who are you talking about? Just say it, man. It's Gainesville. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it's Gainesville. They have the best facility in the in the state. Yeah, that's true. You can't argue I that. Mean, well, uh, depends what you're looking for, though. Not not to knock it, but our surface is better than their surface. Your surface is better. Yeah. But if you look at just no facility, you can't you can't hold the camera. It's not a to knock no, on no, Braden. No, 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 no. No, I wasn't saying that. Yeah. I was just saying that. Of course. Just to be real, I I would even say that OSW surface is better. Like, no, I'm not I, saying that I would to agree. Be, like, I would 100 percent agree. But when you and look they probably at don't, tower they probably and, don't run enough mm-hmm. to have the surfaces that we have. And that's the that's where the issue yeah, becomes. Because yeah. like they they have a great crew up there too. There's like one do. event Dude. for street cars that happens every yeah. year. Derek those, Putnam puts it on. Yeah, the those, three five two shootout. Yeah, yeah. And, that's it. And import face off. I think goes there like once a year now or something. Okay, like that. that's cool. Um, they have a good program. Listen, I love that track. And that track will always hold a special place in my heart because they saved us last year. We we wouldn't have had FL2K last year had yeah. it not been for Gainesville. And it was amazing. Like, for a last-minute move of an event of that magnitude, it was an amazing event. And, like, that place, another place that just has a great vibe to it. But, yeah, I mean, they don't – it's 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 very corporate. You know what I mean? Like, they just don't do the things that we are going to do here. But also, like, think about it like this. Like, I race – a lot in the state of Florida. They are my one of my closest tracks next to Orlando. And there are so few events there that I go there once, maybe twice a year. Yeah. Orlando, yeah. I pretty much never go to Orlando either because the, they just don't cater to me. And I don't, I don't need to be catered to. You know, I like maybe something. No, but I get what you're saying. Something. Yeah, and, you know, that's like something that... I was only there for sick week, both of those tracks. That's something that we have tried to not do. And we've gotten kind of lucky to not fall into that category because it's like Orlando has a reputation of being an import track and like a Latino track. Yeah. Um, which isn't a bad thing, but... Well, Orlando is very 
like, no, it Latino, is. Yeah, no, like the area. And it is. Yeah, yeah. Like if you went to South Florida, like there would Absolutely. be Cubans there. Absolutely. Yeah, no, for sure. But I just mean like that's the kind of events that people expect to see from them. Yeah. But like. They don't do a ton of it, but they have the World Street Nationals. Yeah. You know, which is, you know. And I was there for that. They have Ultra Street and they have, you know, other X275 or whatever. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. But like yeah, they I have the missiles. heavyweight class there. But they're just not, it's not expected. They're not known for that. They're known for their huge import events. They have some of the biggest import events in the world. Their rotary crowd is very deep rooted there. You go there for like their December uh, import race or they have one in December. that I think that might be their big one. Or maybe it's November. I don't know. They have they have a couple, but like there's like one or two that are like just insane. And like the only thing that I could like compare it to would be like the sport compact days at English Town. Like it's you know, elbow to shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, loud cars, import cars, and like import fans are wild, man. Gambling constantly on the Import starting fans lines. get pumped, dude. You send two cars down there and they're side by side, they're jumping up and down before they even see who mm-hmm. wins. Yeah, and so Rotary's put on vibe. a show when, yeah. like, two Rotary cars, like, two little starlets are trying to get down the track. So sick. They are all over the and place. Like, like, So, you know, it's just like, so the Orlando brand, at least from, like, the outside looking in, has turned into that. But, like, it's like SGMP. SGMP, people only expect to see a Donald Log production out of there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you can do other things. So, like, I feel like it's like, you know, like how actors get, like, typecast. Right, yeah. like you like only want to see this Denzel Washington doing Denzel Washington things. You know what I mean? Like yep. if he's not like killing somebody at this point, like if I don't see him like how I see him in like Equalizer, I'm just like ah, eh, you know, like ah. Oh, the Rock yeah. is the same in every yeah, movie. Exactly. So like it's never been different. So these tracks have kind of gotten that, and I feel like we're kind of lucky that we have broken that mold because I think that when I got involved with Bradenton, even like when I started doing FL2K in 2013, people were like, I had I've had people say to me when I was doing started FL2K like. Why would you do it there? They don't like imports. They don't like imports. What are you talking about? Like, is your money not green? Yeah, like where did you even <laughs> come up with that? Just because they don't do import races, they don't like imports? Yeah. But it's like people say things and they don't understand the consequence of what they're saying. And like the, what you're saying comes at a cost. And now the cost is you're giving, you're saying, telling people or discouraging people from going to a certain track because they don't like imports. Like that's, that's nonsense. It's gibberish. Yeah. Don't even say that. So, well, maybe some of the racers, like, you know, I'll say every now and then I don't like front wheel drive stuff. Yeah, no, and that's fair and that's okay. <laughs> but as a racer, you as a track to. supporter, I yeah. like to see the class yeah. at the track. <laughs> and we don't. Here's the thing: we don't have to love all of it, but like we can't be ignorant and saying, "Oh, don't go to this track because they don't like imports." You know what I'm saying? So, but anyways, yeah. I feel like we kind of broke that mold. And Bradenton, I hope if we're known for any one thing, I would say it's probably pro mods. Okay, but. Bradenton is a place that you could say we're going to do DCT World Cup and nobody says anything like, like oh, cool. Yeah. We're going to do a top fuel race. Cool. We're going to do a pro mod race. Cool. We're going to do a streetcar race. Cool. Like we've and that's hard work. We're going to do a big dollar bracket race. Like it's it's hard to build the brand to get to where it is now. And our brand is that we just love drag racing. You need to capture a diesel guy. Have a diesel event. Maybe. Do we uh, know <laughs> Somebody that, like, they do that UCC up in India, and that event is huge. Yeah. Dude, the diesel market is insane, and so, like, slept on. People don't realize it's lots of diesel. Big money in that. Yeah, yeah, for huge sure. Huge money in the diesel stuff, because they break a lot of stuff. Yeah. Any any business, you're breaking a lot of stuff, you yeah. know? You're kind of, it's a good spot to be. But, you know, that's the, but to be fair, so, like, we could say tomorrow that we were going to do a diesel event, and people would accept that. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, nobody would cre- question. Correct. We've, we've created a brand that's just... Drag race. You guys have avoided being put into a box. Yeah. And a lot of tracks get put into that box Mm -hmm. where I feel like, you know, what was really good at not doing that also was Houston Raceway. They used to do like truck events. They would do like takeover kind of stuff. It wasn't always like that. Think about it. In the last like three years. Before TX2K, guys like you and me never heard of Houston Raceway Park like in, in in the sense of like somebody we knew was racing there. Yeah. That's fair. But like Dallas, you don't hear much about. Dallas. Yeah, but they do streetcar stuff. They're 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 known for streetcar stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, they have an amazing facility too. So I think that TX two K twenty four is gonna be really cool. I've been there one time before for streetcar takeover. So I met. It's out in the middle of nowhere. Like Houston yeah. is out in the middle. Yeah, of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. No, this is out in the middle. So of I nowhere. met T J Bailey in probably two thousand and sixteen or fifteen. He came and helped with the snowbirds with Alan. I met him. It's crazy. I. I met him. I met uh, Tyler Crossnow, 
who runs VMP and PDRA. Shout out to Tyler. Yep, Tyler, another another a badass. Because he's been uh, to every track in the country. Yep. So he knows and how I to met run one. Kurt Johnson, all at the Snowbirds in like probably 2015 or something. And I've heard nothing but great things about TJ. And I follow him on Facebook. And I hear great things about the facility. And it's a really big facility, really nice facility. Yep. I honestly think it's going to be a great home for TX2K. I'm like excited to go to TX2K. Yeah. Well, Houston's not the most ideal city to go to. Maybe Dallas is a little better. You no, know, I've been going to TX2K Baytown. since 2007. So in 2007, I was a senior in high school. TX2K fell on my spring break, and I convinced the parents to let me go. And I went, me and Denny from our shop, I nice. think, went with us, uh, Eli. So a bunch of, like, my buddies, we all went, and we had a blast. And I haven't really missed one since. I missed one for a wedding that I was, like, in. Otherwise, I wouldn't yeah. have gone. But anyhow, um, Houston used to be really cool. So and like, it's still, high it's, school, Victor, going down there. And that was when they used to do it at, like, not was a, at, when I The first year that I went was at Hennessy. Yeah. Which was a great track. Like, I had fun there. That was cool that his shop had a track. Yeah. First off. Yeah. Like that's a, that's a that's, that's really like cool. the dream right there. Yeah. It was fun. Like we'd have the Dino Day and then we'd go drag racing. Like, and that was Supra stuff too. Yeah. It was at that point it was really still just the Supra event. And then it started yeah. to turn into a GTR event. And then it was like both. And then it just turned into a streetcar freaking mm-hmm. the, the streetcar race of the year, really. I mean, if we're being honest. Yeah. I mean, it's still kind of like it still has that 2J roots to it and it the does. GTR. It has the 2J roots because Peter so many loves of, 2Js. Well, that and because so many of those people progress and in, into Lambos and into Vipers mm-hmm. and stuff like you know, like so it's a lot. It's I guess I say that because it's a lot of the same people, just different cars. Yeah, you know. Yeah, all the same like core, some of the same core people, and yeah. I'm obviously very new at all of this. I've Not I've just watched new. all. I mean, you went 2007. I went, what, 2016? <laughs> like, that's yeah. but fucking I mean, 10 years. I was saying that to say that Houston used to be really, really cool, and it still is, but I also think that... The city? Yeah, I was. We had, used to have a lot of fun at TX2K in Houston. Oh, yeah, I mean, the street stuff was insane. Yeah. But I also think that it's cool sometimes to just have a change of scenery. Because, mm-hmm. like, no, listen, last year... We spent the entire summer upgrading the track with just the goal was that FL2K would be the first big event that everybody would see the new and improved BMP. Had a hurricane. That didn't happen that way, whatever. The worst hurricane in 100 years. (laughs) I'm so over that hurricane. (laughs) Anyway, so we made the best of it. NHRA and Gainesville stepped up and saved us and allowed us to move that event there. But now looking back at it, we had so much fun in Gainesville just because it was new. Just because it was a new city. Yeah. Dude, I was so tired. I had, so my daughter Angelina was born on October 3rd, and I think the event was like the 6th through the 8th. Nice. So I was in the hospital until with my wife until like October 4th. And then we, like, before, leading up to the baby coming, I was doing runs back and forth to Gainesville, bringing equipment and just, just, Glue, you name it, bringing yeah. things back and forth Had out of a out of a zone that just got hit with a Correct. massive hurricane. Correct. So it wasn't like you were just transporting. Like no roads were destroyed. Dude, there were I could we had employees that couldn't come help us because they couldn't get to yeah. work. There was flooding everywhere. Dude, it was insane. I remember me and Adriana. She like just was like riding with me and like helping me out and Wade and you name it. Uh, I th- I forget who. All somebody, hands on deck. Dude, somebody, I don't even remember who. I think it was RG had one of his drivers take, like, our tractors up there. Dude, we did all kinds of things to make the event happen. And I was dead tired. I hadn't slept in probably, like, a week. And we went out every night after the track. <laughs> we went out every single night. And we yeah. had a blast. And it was fun. And the only reason it was so much fun was because it was in a new city. So I think bringing that to TX2K, it's like it's time. You know what I mean? Every couple of years yeah. it moves, and that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely I get that. And after FL2K, we even talked. We were like, should we do? Should there be two? <laughs> yeah, I know. It was fun. Like, man. should it be like a point to deal almost, Dude, like a two fun, race man. series? That you know, it was fun. And Gainesville had a great vibe to it too. Which so I'm a much big, good I'm, racing I'm, there. I'm big on the vibe. The vibe. Yeah. The vibe is like because that's like an intangible. That's not something that any of us can like really create on our own. You know mm-hmm. that. That's all the people there creating that. And the vibe was great. 
It was. It was a really freaking good event. Up See, like there. Bradenton just has that vibe. It's been created already. You get what yeah. I'm saying? So like we do an event in Bradenton, everybody says the same thing. Like for the most part, everybody loves it. The place has its own vibe, you know? Yeah. Like me and Bronte, we show up at Bradenton. Like we, we try to go there all the time. Like even yeah. if I'm not racing, we'll just go there and hang out and walk around. And it always gets that like same feeling. It's got a vibe. Of man. Just like Dude, that place is a vibe. I you're remember there. I just had the memory pop up on my Facebook a year ago, Saturday was the first time we opened after we redid the track. You remember how crazy that was? Yeah. The stands were like packed. It was like homecoming. And let me tell you something. If you're watching this podcast and you're local or whatever and you came to Street Heat in August of 2022, thank you. Because I'm not even trying to, like, I'm not joking. I'm not trying to be funny or whatever. That track rebuild was like one of the most stressful things of my life. Okay? And... I wasn't in like I was I'm not gonna say I was in a dark place, but I was like I was burnt. I was like yeah. just I was just about over it. And that street heat, everybody came out. The stands yeah. were packed. And I cannot tell you guys enough how much I needed that that street heat. The, yep. the timing, like I needed that to happen that night. And it was great too because street heats are relaxed. Yep. They're not like a high stress event where you're yep. you know, draw some chips yeah, or yeah, build yeah, a ladder. No, no. It's just like some racing, some it's, passes. It's, it's, a, it's a test and tune type of event. Yeah. It was so cool, man. So it was like, a packed, calm event. Dude, it was so <laughs> cool. The memories popped up on my Facebook today. And I, yeah, shout out to everybody who came to that event. You guys don't know, but you may have added some years to my life. <laughs> yeah, help them out a little bit after that. that just was, seeing, you know, like, I remember at one point, like, just standing back and looking in the stands, like, Damn, this is awesome. Yeah. And, you know, like I had months of I didn't have that feeling, you know, and sometimes you just need to be reminded of why we do the stuff that we do. Yeah, that definitely helps. And like the pro mod races obviously help a lot, too. After like a dead even final in a pro mod race or, you know, somebody losing on a whole shot by a thou. Yep, yep, yep. Like that kind of stuff is just like this is why we drag race. Yep, yep, yep. And that's just like the best moments possible. Yeah, I'm, even I'm, like when like induction cars go out there for some testing, like mm-hmm. just great. Yeah, no, I mean I'm so looking forward to our season, man. It's gonna be awesome. Me too. It's gonna be so. It'll cool. be here like that, dude. Mm-hmm. We got your car ready, man. I know. Like, we gotta get our dude. I got a kid on the together. way in December. <laughs> December twenty fifth, man. That's awesome. Christmas baby, me that's and awesome. Denny. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> We're dead even. <laughs> That's awesome, though, man. TX2K babies. Kids are great, and we need someone to take over in 20 years. Yeah, you know, I got a whatever son on the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're the future. Try my best. I'm going to drag him out of the track <laughs> every chance I get. What do you do? Your kid just hates drag racing. Like, Dad, this is stupid. <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting because me, I didn't grow up around any cars. Yeah. Nothing. And How I, did you get into cars? I just, I, I loved, like engineering of them like yeah. the fact that there was a million and a half moving parts and they all had to work together yep just drew me in because you know i didn't care for like ball sports i was like i'm yeah. not really like ath- athletic didn't like really Dude, appeal you, you to me be, you could be athletic yeah i could i could swim maybe <laughs> 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 all right all right <laughs> but like there was just something so cool about like you kind of had to use like your mind and your hands yeah. to to make it work There's it wasn't some... just like a uh, coordination in the moment yeah. thing. There's so many parts of this sport, so many so moving many. pieces. And like, even the the fun thing of like tracing down like a problem, mm-hmm. like a car has an issue. Like even that, when you like kind of step back and you're like, yeah. that was fun. Like I just had to like figure that out and like use all of my brain and 50 other problems that I've heard from other people yep. kind of have to come together. And, and Google. And Google. <laughs> you talk to five different people. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like, I don't know, there's just like the ultimate challenge of yeah. everything. Yeah. And I tell people that all the time. I'm like, where are you going to have to deal with fluid dynamics and pressure and suspension and articulation combustion of parts, and combustion, and fuel traction, types, temperature out? Like there are a billion moving parts. And it's We're pretty crazy. much rocket scientists. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty, much. <laughs> pretty much. I want to talk to somebody that is actually a rocket scientist. I'm sure we know one. And, like, bounce off, like, some of the differences. And I'm sure there's a lot to be learned yeah. from them. Yeah. I don't think they can learn anything from us, maybe. Probably not. <laughs> We've had some cars take flight. I've, I've seen that. <laughs> You've done it. 
I've taken fl- not all four wheels off the ground, but like some of the pro mods all are like f- all four off the ground means you were late. <laughs> but no, but like a thousand feet out, it's like yeah, zoom, yeah, right up into the air. Yeah. That there was that silver Mustang like a couple months back that went like over the scoreboards nearly the whole thing. That's happened a few times. Yeah, there was like an orange uh, Pontiac, I like one of Duck races last year. Yeah, that thing went super airborne. Um, what's his name? The guy that passed away. Local guy with the red. Oh, he's not local actually. Tim Slavens. Tim Slavens. Yeah, he's flown like that Midwest. car quite that, a few that times. That old car, that thing went for a ride, and they fixed it and continued to race. Yeah, R.I.P. Tim. Bunch of, bunch of badasses. There great was one dude. great guy too. Everything I've ever seen from him, I'm like that guy. Great dude. Like, great dude. Legend. There was um, I was just looking at this what pro mod up in PDRA last weekend that blew apart, blew the supercharger off, and they fixed it back up. That was pretty. Oh, that was a uh, Bill Lutz. Yeah, man, dude. and they won. Talk about a hustle. They won. They had I to win, dude. It's so crazy. So when your car like just completely catastrophically fails at a race and you decide to fix it. There's one of two outcomes. You either like have a terrible time or you win the race. Mm-hmm. I remember I think last year, uh, Ryan and DJ McCain, the McCain brothers, they uh, they were at a duck race in Georgia. I think they say similar thing. They had like a wheelie or maybe they hit the wall. Something happened and they fixed the car and they like, I mean, borrowed parts from people. Like they went crazy and they fixed yeah. the car and they won the race. That's the best. I would do that and then like my car wouldn't turn on or yep. it would break in the burnout. But I'm the I'm the other the, you know the other half of that. I world. I look at it like I'm gonna cut my losses now because <laughs> I'm about to put all this time and effort into it, and I know it's not gonna do what yeah. I hope it does. That's that nice. happened to me at TX2K. Like the you know the car caught on fire and the trans was broken, and I had buddies bless their heart. They were like, "All right, come on, you man, got the spare go. trans." Yeah. I'm like, "The spare trans? What are you talking yeah. about? I'm going home, dude." I'm big on the go home thing. I'm I'm big on it because. The like I don't want to be let down twice. Yeah, <laughs> you know well, what I mean. <laughs> in in our defense, that usually happens to them in qualifying on like Tuesday, yeah, or Wednesday, yeah. and they have all this time. Like when you're streetcar racing, if it happens Friday night or Saturday night, you're not, yeah, you're not getting it back together in a few hours. Yeah. That's but like, it's also hard to like not tell to, to tell your team like, ah, oh, man, just leave it alone. You know what I mean? Like if they're yeah. like really pushing to do it, it's hard. Yeah, it's so man, tough. like, I feel like I'm a bad guest. What, Bad guess. What, what do you did, mean? We've what, been... what did you want? Like, what were we supposed to talk about? Did we cover everything? Well, so the inside of this podcast is I just want to sit down with my friends and have cool car conversations. Okay, we did that. And I want everybody that is on this to feel like it was worth it for them. Yeah, no, I mean, like, it's fun, too. It's, it's yeah. Perfect. That's yeah. all I want. I want people to, I want them to get something out of it. Yep. I want the guest to feel like, Oh man, I want to go on that again. Yep, yep. I was able to promote my stuff and yeah, have a good conversation. Yeah, yeah. People heard from me that normally don't. I always feel like when I do these kind of things that there's like something, like a juicy piece of information of some sort that like just like a question, like something. So I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything because I'm just on here just rambling. I'm just talking. Dude, that was that's great. That's what I want to do. That's what <laughs> I, I want this to feel like. My my thought is when I sit down with people, I want it to feel like you just sat down at Texas Roadhouse with your friends after yeah, a race. It's like or like the barber shop, and, you're and just that like was the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, because right. a lot of these people, like I get messages all the time. They're like I drive trucks eight hours a day. Yeah. If yeah. you could give me eight hours of car conversation, I'm here for it, and I'm yeah. like, cool, or like True. an assembly line or something like that. So I'm just that's my hope is okay. and. Anybody in sure, the car I'm industry. just trying to make sure I'm a good guest because I want to be invited back. I mean, shoot, we hardly even touched on induction performance. Like, what are you yeah, talking about? We're an hour and 40 in, and we didn't even talk about your shop <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you, that you like opened when you were 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Some truth to that. Yeah, I, I think you were doing it before, like, you were even out of middle school. <laughs> Dude, I could tell you some stories. So, I think I was in, like... Seventh or eighth grade, and I literally like at school printed a wholesale a wholesale application to be able to buy parts from like a distributor, and then like on the weekend I would take it to my dad's shop and be like, "Dad, what's a tax ID?" Yeah, and like get all the info from him, whatever, and then go back to school on Monday and like send it over. However, I don't even did I yeah. I don't even know, but anyways, like I was opening wholesale accounts when I was in like seventh and eighth grade. To and he parts. and your dad had like a oil change tire shop type of deal? So my dad had, New York's a little different. So he had 
a gas station that had a shop, and it was general repair. But my dad had a Supra, like his. It, it was like a mirror image of his car that he has now. Like a so, Mark III. Yeah, so he had an 89 Supra, and he did some street racing in Mexico back then. And it was very simple. Like, if you went to the street races and somebody was fast, you wanted to know why they were fast, what they were doing. And he was doing most of it himself, him and my uncle. Yeah. So it naturally turned into it was a general repair shop full of Supras. We would do both. And I just, like... I just couldn't get enough of it, man. Like fast performance cars was just it. Yeah, couldn't get enough of it. Dude, I would literally like when we would have like computer time in school, I would be like trying to research. Like so back then, this is before your time, but <laughs> we would have we like, talking like 2004, 2002. Fresh off Fast and Furious. Yeah. So like you would have. Uh, RBs were all the rage. No, nah, not in the Northeast. It was two J's. Well, it was like Fast and Furious was yeah. showcasing the. Yeah. Well, the, no, the original Fast and Furious was all two J. Oh, I thought that they. I thought he had the silver. I thought he had the silver. No, that's uh, uh, R34 in that. That's too fast, too furious. Maybe mm, the second one maybe, or something. Yeah. I went. I remember. Like I went. I remember the movie theater I went to. Like I remember seeing the first Fast and Furious movie. Me and my dad. It was so cool. But um, I would Google, and learn how or try to learn, like. At the time, it was like electronic boost controllers. Like everybody had an electronic boost controller on their car. Yeah. So I would learn how to use them. So like the Gretty one was had to be set up this way. Yeah. And the HK, HKS had like three of them, and they would like this is how you set up this one and how you set up that one. Be like these Japanese companies. Yeah, and like I would like and I would use like translators and like just dive into trying to figure out like how does the AFC work and how does the HKS VPC work and like. People would come, they thought it was funny. They'd come to my dad's shop and be like, Vic, what does VPC stand for? And I could rattle it off and mm -hmm. tell them and like explain to them what it does and how it works. And I was just a nerd about it. And yeah, I mean, I've pretty much been doing this forever. So were you, you were you Racer X that they talk about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Well, he was from the Northeast. I think they were talking about that guy in the, um, they did like a documentary on like the original Fast and the Furious where yeah, yeah, they went so, into New York City, I guess, and found someone. I don't know the details of that story, but it's uh, Ralphie from DRT, uh, which DRT was a thing back then. Like that was a shop that we knew of, and they were one of the first ones in New York to have a dyno jet. And like, you know, they were, I don't know what their real involvement was with the Fast and Furious thing, but yeah, like, and that guy still races. They bought a head gasket from us at yeah. World Cup Finals and we're trying to fix the 2J. So. I think their involvement was <clears throat> the writer saw it and was like, oh, this is like a tuner shop. Yeah, this I is think like it was like something like that. Is. Yeah, like the, one of the writers or somebody who like helped create the movie like picked their brains kind of and mm -hmm. like tried to like just like get some ideas from them kind of thing. And like maybe they took him to the street races or something like that. I think it was something along those lines. Yeah. He kind of got like the vibe of it from yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever the the guy that did all the cars in that actually has some really interesting videos? Like, cause I follow him on he's, Instagram. He's really What's cool. His name? Oh, I, it's, it's escaping guys me. Guys, the goat. But he had to like fight them. They were like, yeah. "What do you mean we're not gonna have like a freaking Prius in it?" Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. "You can't." have a Prius in it. Yeah. Like, he had to, like, do stuff like that to the <laughs> studio. So crazy that that movie had the influence that it did. Yeah. And now it's a movie about nothing. Oh, as it, I mean, once you start making money, you have to appeal to a broader audience. And we, so we did an, an event. We did an, uh, an event for induction performance. We rented a theater and we gave all of our customers tickets to go see The Last Fast and Furious. I would have got up and left if I wasn't in there with, 70 of our customers yeah. and friends. It was terrible. But a lot of your customers probably brought their kids, so maybe that helps. Dude, it was terrible. I didn't see it. Don't see it. I wasn't at the event, clearly, because I didn't see it. It was terrible. Yeah, you're too cool for us sometimes. But well, yeah. you guys are pretty far in my defense. No, yeah, it's true. For a, for a Fast and the Furious movie. Yeah. I'll go up there if you got a dino day or something cool. We might get back to doing those at some point. We used to do them all the time, and they were a lot of fun. You know what we're doing now that's cool is... Track Bu days. Yeah, track days. <laughs> a lot cooler than a dino day. <laughs> bu building cars to, to race at these events, which is just, like, there's just so much going on. When do you do all this? Yeah. Like. Oh, we're, we're trying to plan our baby shower, and it's like every weekend is something. There's a car event. It's something where it's like, oh, I can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. Do that. So, like, in 2013, we did the first FL2K. In, like, 2010, 11, 12, it wasn't like that. 
Like, it's really cool talking to people now because, like, I talk to shop owners and stuff, and they're like, dude, we used to, like, just be, like, twiddling our thumbs. And now they're like, it's like FL2K prep, yeah. hardcore, you know what I mean? And then TX2K prep, and, like, it's, it's good. I remember my first FL2K. You were loading up in the copper car. Oh, nice. Yeah. I vividly remember seeing the copper car, and I think... Copper car's coming back out. I think one of the first cars that I was really, like, holy crap was um, Titan Supra. Mm-hmm. Because that thing has been around for so long. And that car's a legend as far as, like, supercar. Super for sure. Are, yeah. And it always had, like, this different look to it because yeah. the nose is a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah So yeah. it always looked like a pro mod but yeah. not. So our, our Supra is coming back out very soon. Um, it's almost done at the chassis shop. Then we got to wire it up, put it together. We're hoping to debut it at TX2K. And we're going to give – we want to put up some big numbers with that one. I'm excited for that car. I think that's going to be a really cool one. Yeah. It's cool that Florida has all the 2J. Yeah. Like, a lot of it, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, for the most part, Florida's got a lot of the 2J. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say it now. Um, I think that Florida's going to win the 2J class at TX2K. Oh, yeah. It's got to. Like, I mean, I'm not going there for any other reason. Mm-hmm. So, like, something's going to have to happen to prevent it. Are you racing anything at World Cup? Um, you guys going to put the uh, booger back together? No, nah, so booger's for sale. What if James... Talk shit or something. Nah, nah. Booger's for sale. We're going to get that car into a good home. And it's just too much to focus on that car and the copper car. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it just, it's the right time. And it's such a cool car. Like, that's one of the coolest cars we've ever built. That is like that chassis alone. That car is so nice. You can take the engine out of that thing and wheel it around, and people will be like, wow. Dude, that car is like so nice front to back. Yep. Underneath it, inside of it. Like, that car is really nice. So it's just the right time. So we'll get that car to a new a new home. For and sale. we'll focus on the copper car. Yep, it's for sale. You guys are looking for a six-second 2J build. Yeah. Just beautiful 97 anniversary edition Supra and freaking the deep jewel green metallic yeah. color. Like, cars Enough are sick. Enough caging it to go race whatever you want. Yeah, you can do whatever you want with that car. It's sick. And it's easy to drive. Like, it's just a cool car. Mm-hmm. We'll yeah, probably, I mean, even Troy drove it. And- yeah. Yeah, didn't mess He's never up. driven a turbo car. <laughs> oh, no, he loves it now. I'll have to send you the videos. He does videos. He sent me videos of him bumping in. It's hilarious. <laughs> His weird thing that these yeah. these turbo guys do. That's like yeah. I don't know how you can drive a nitrous car because bumping in is like ha- like half of the fun of racing. Like getting it up on the brake and stuff. Like that's so fun. I so like to me, staging a car is like the coolest part of a drag race, and like. That's kind of why I started running front wheel drive is because I wanted to learn all of the different ways and processes and different kinds of cars to stage. So like I've driven nitrous cars, mm-hmm. driven turbo cars. Now I've driven, I've driven stick rear wheel drive cars, driven stick front wheel drive cars. Um, I think next, really the only thing left for me is I want to drive like something with like a screw blower on it. Yeah. That'd be cool. Um, but yeah, so I think back to your question, World Cup Finals. We'll probably run a Supra in one of the classes, or two of the class, two Supras in one class, possibly. Um, and then I think we're gonna run the Goldie, the BC Run BC sponsored Civic, mm-hmm. and Rob's car, the Gringo Tuning uh, Fuel Injector Clinic Civic. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like Rob's car. Yeah, I like that car too. So I think we're gonna run those two cars. Not entirely sure what class yet, but we're definitely gonna. You know, that's the other thing is you have to sign up and like hope you even get a ticket. That thing yeah. sells out like that. I know he's he's created really good hype around such that such a cool event, man, and it's like the perfect time of year. It's one of those things again, like you yeah. can't do that race any better time of the year. It's like perfect, yeah, perfect location, right in the middle for everyone for the most part. That awesome. race has always surprised me because every time you go racing, if it's a Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday deal, Sunday there's nobody in the stands watching the racing. That's a South thing. That's a Southeast thing, but not there in it's the Northeast. Crazy. It's not like that because I remember growing up and going to English Town and. We would, I would never, I would rarely go on Saturday because in the Northeast, a lot of people work on Saturday. You want to go see the race, it too. Like, well, yeah. that too. But so I remember one time I like was, I used to be so like, oh man, the race is Saturday and Sunday. And like, I would only go and be able to go on Sunday with my dad because we would work on Saturdays. So I remember one time I got one of his friends to go to, like, my dad to let me go with one of his friends. And we went on a Saturday and it was like a ghost town. It was like how Sundays are normally here. And then we went back on Sunday and it was packed. So I think it's just, a cult, like a cultural, uh, interesting, yeah, northeast thing. Like, I think a lot of people in the northeast work on 
Saturdays. That would probably make sense. I mean, I, I grew up in a summer town anyways, so yeah, <laughs> it was always the weekends. Dude, you grew up in like a fake place. Yeah. That's not even like a real like. I know. It's like, that's like, like everyone there's on vacation, right? Everybody but me was, yeah. Because <laughs> my family worked for the, the tourist industry, so like. Yeah. Fourth of July, they did fireworks, and I'd be watching them from, like, the store I worked in. <laughs> <laughs> so people are like, wow, that's so cool. I'm like, yeah, like, I worked in a hot dog wagon. <laughs> I grew up in Long Island, and I can't tell you how many times I went to Montauk. Twice? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a different world out there. Cool place, though. Cool place. Well, anything else we need to do before we wrap this up? No, um, definitely check us out online. Check out. The FL2K website for all the yep. info on that. Buy tickets for that ASAP. Uh, BradentonMotorsportsPark.com. Check out our full schedule. We have so much cool stuff going on this Thursday year. night testing every week. Yep. And, I mean, just you name it. We've got stuff going on all the time. Check out our, you know, follow us on social media if you don't already. Um, induction, follow us on social media there. We're going to be building the Rat Rod Supra, rebuilding <laughs> the Rat Rod Supra again. Yeah. So there's some cool content coming there. And we've been doing a lot of uh, stuff with Precision Turbo. Yeah. And we actually have a Precision Turbo like dedicated store. And you can find things that you can normally not find. And we have most of the things on that website in stock. So like before, it was getting to a point where we'd sell someone a turbo and it'd take three or four weeks to get it. We have like hundreds of turbos in stock, it seems like nowadays. And a huge thing on car parts is don't be afraid to just talk to the guy selling you. Though. Yeah. Just email, call, yeah, like, and like, honestly, talk to them. You can get information. Yeah, you don't have to buy it blind. And sometimes somebody will call us and we'll be like, dude, don't buy anything. Yeah. Like, we really will. Like, if we're, we'll make sure you get the right thing. And, like, we pride ourselves on that. And that's why we don't have 10 salespeople. You know what I mean? Um, but that, our, our websites are really cool. Inductionperformance.com is full of 2J stuff. Um, Induction Performance or IP-PTE.com yep. for your precision turbo stuff. I'll be in the description below. Yeah, All these kind out. of things. FL2K. And I'm going to come back because next time I'm going to write. Say, I thought Coop was going to have the questions. Next, I'm taking this with <laughs> me. I'm going to write down my own questions because I probably didn't cover <laughs> half the things that I intended to. But I had a great time. So thanks for having me. Yeah, dude. Thanks for coming on. But that'll do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Mm -hmm.